morning and a very warm welcome to Sweden and the 88th edition of Vassalopet. This is the fifth of seven races in the Ski Classics. Of course, Ski Classics in its second year of operation. Well, this is the world's oldest, longest and most prestigious cross-country skiing race, dating all the way back to 1922, this 90-kilometer race held in the beautiful and historically important region of Dalarna begins here in Salin, concluding in Mora. Well, this race inspired by King Gustav Vasa back in 1520, and well, some 15,800 participants on the starting line here today, and what a great race it's gonna be. Fantastic conditions, and as mentioned, this is the one everyone is waiting for. This is the race that everyone wants to win. Well, over the time, we have seen some half a million skiers from all over the world complete this great race here in Sweden. And well, today, some 37 nations are represented in the starting lineup. And then you can see the participants down there rearing to go on the starting line. We are about, well, nine minutes away from a start here in Salen. Beautiful pictures from overhead. And uh, this is the course for today. Starting in Sullen, small to gun after 11 kilometers. Like each and every Ski Classics, we have two sprint stages here today. The first after 26 kilometers. And while well, the second will be in Everts Bay after 47 kilometers of this 90 kilometer race, the longest in Ski Classics. Well, we've been to the Czech Republic, we've been to Germany, we've been to Italy. Of course, our last race was in Estonia, and now it's time for Sweden to take center stage here in Ski Classics. Well, as always, a lot of spectators along the side of the track. We see a lot of spectators here in Salen and especially at the finish line in Mora after 90 kilometers. And uh, we should see a time around just under four hours here today for the top athletes, of course. Well, Ski Classic, some 22 teams represented this year. Nine of those teams coming from Sweden, seven from Norway. Incredible numbers there. 15,800 participants here today. We were all booked up for this race in June of 2011. It's just very, very popular here in Sweden. As always, the top competitors will be at the starting line at the front. As we see a mass start here today. Such an impressive sight, really is fantastic to watch. 88th edition of Vassalopet. So many people have competed in this race. Of course, it's a big week. Seen races throughout the week, including the, the Shea Vasa for the woman. See Susan Nistrom there, one of the top competitors for the woman, of course. She's on a roll at the moment, winning the last three ski classic races. Well, the weather gods certainly have been kind to us today. The sun is shining. And well, 12 months ago, 2011, we saw Jürgen Brink take it on the line over Stanislav Rajak, Jerry Alin crossing in third place. And there you see the two sprint stages, 26 kilometers and 47 kilometers respectively. Well, a leader at the moment, Stanislav Rajak has a quite a comfortable lead when it comes to the Ski Classic sprints category.
certainly is going to be a tough race. 90 kilometers. And once again, we look at the map. This is where we're starting in Sullen. Small gun after 11 kilometers. Then we see that first sprint. It'll be interesting to see if the participants will be going for those all important sprint points. If it's by after 47 kilometers, Ox Bay 62 kilometers before finishing in Mora. To the delight of the locals and many who will travel from all around Sweden to watch the finish in Mora. Not too far away from a start. Now four minutes before we get underway. If we look at the current leaders for Ski Classic, Stanislav Rajak, really in a good position for the men. He's on 600 points just ahead of Jorgen Auckland, Jimmy Jonsson from Team X Spirit. It's been a great year for him. He's currently sitting in third place. Well, for the woman, it's all about Team X Spirit at the moment, led by Nistrom. Well, for the team, Team Extra personnel leading the way over Team X Spirit. While the youth there at the bottom of the screen, Leila Kvali for the woman. She's had a great season as well, the 24 year old from Team Extra personnel. If we look at the starting list for today, well, the ones to look out for, of course, number one. Jorgen Brink, two-time defending champion, going for the triple. Number two, Stanislav Rajak, our current leader in ski classics. Jiri Alin in number three. The two Auckland brothers, Anders in number four. His brother Jorgen in 137. Both of them have been victorious here in the past. Anders 2004, Jorgen in 2008. Well, Jimmy Jonsson there in 22. As mentioned, it's been a consistent year for the team expert youngster. Well, Thomas Alscore down there to race, but I'll tell you what, he certainly will not be racing today, unfortunately. The Norwegian veteran, just a little bit ill today. Also look out for, of course, Daniel Tinell, three-time winner here. He'll be wearing bib number 20. And in bib 167, Daniel Rickardsen, of course, an Olympic gold medalist from Sweden. After a second placing, in Tatu Marathon, he'll be one to watch for. Well, for the woman, of course, our defending champion. Wearing 501, Jenny Hansen from Team Experit. Susan Nistrom wearing bib 502. Well, Sarah Svensson, of course, victorious in Ski Classics race number one, wearing 512. Well, it's fantastic now to welcome into the commentary box with me, Martin Larsen, former Swedish representative, bronze medalist with the Swedish team at the 2007 World Championships. He's competed here in Barcelona seven times, including a very impressive second place in 2005. Good morning, Martin. It's great to have you here. Thank you very much. It's going to be a nice day. It's going to be a fantastic day, isn't it? The, the weather gods certainly have been very, very kind to us. And, well, moments away now from a start here in the 88th edition of Barcelona. And, well, a lot of history in this race here in Sweden, isn't there? I think we have to look out for Jürgen Brink today, so... Yeah, well, there he is on the screen. <laughs> take the third victory. Yeah, oh, that would be very, very impressive indeed to do the treble. The big guns there in the front. Our current leader for Ski Classics wearing the red bib there, Stanislav Rajak from the Czech Republic. have the uh, names on the bibs this year. Uh, it's a new thing okay, they right. have introduced for yep. this year. So who are we looking out for? Of course, we've got uh, two-time defending champion, Jürgen Brink. Who else uh, should we look out for in this race? The Outland brothers is going to be uh, tough to beat today. Jerry Alin, if you have uh, good tactics in the end. Uh, Daniel Tinell, Tinel, you never have to count away. <laughs> and then they're off. And just listen to this. 15,800 skiers getting underway in Salin. Yeah, just hear the sound. It's amazing. That's absolutely fantastic. It's great to see a mass start. 
so many competitors. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very difficult to get underway, too, so <laughs> many people. Yeah, if one crash, everyone crash. <laughs> How, how important is the start for a race like this? Of course, you want to get out of the, the, the rush that is uh, a lot of people trying to get underway. It's not, not a rush for the, uh, the top athletes, but uh, it's a little bit rush uh, if you want to have, uh, like you see here in the pictures, the, not break the equipment and so on. If you are in a, in a crash in the beginning, it can be a disaster for the whole race. Of course, you can lose like 500 places or something. You see the well-groomed tracks there. The, the staff have done a fantastic job once again to get things set up here. About the condition today, it's going to be a really fast uh, race because it has been uh, very warm uh, on Thursday. Then it's uh, cold during uh, the morning, so it's uh, like 12 degrees here in the, at the start. So up on the top on the first hill, it's around six, seven degrees, I think. So it's icy tracks. Perfect. So it's like concrete. What, what, uh, what sort of time could we be expecting for the eventual winner to cross the line in Mora? I think it's going to be a pretty quick race, so I think around 3.50. 3.50? Yeah. So it's still uh, like 12 minutes behind the record time from 1998. Yeah, that was a, a long time ago. Peter Jorunson from Sweden, 3 hours, 38 minutes and 57 seconds. Going at an average speed there of 26 kilometers per hour. But you were saying earlier that was due to a bit of a headwind on that occasion. Yeah. Our backwind. Uh, Our so, backwind, yeah. yeah so so we have not so much wind today. So. It's going to take some time for those skiers right at the very back to get across the start line. Yeah, yeah take a time just to get going. Exactly. Of course, a, a lot of social participants as well. Here is interesting in the right corner in the picture, you have uh, Daniel tonight just double pulling, so maybe he's going without uh, kick wax. What, what, do you, what is the setup for, for a majority of these top guys today? With the waxing, you yes. think? Yes. Yeah, I think uh, more people going just double pulling today because of the condition is very fast and so on, so it's pretty easy to double pull the first hill. But uh, you should remember it's 90k long. So it's uh, in the end you have to be fast. So if you just uh, double pull for like 60k, you get get a little bit tired. So the last 30k, which normally goes really fast, you don't have the extra energy to do the breakout or just join the breakout. Then of course. Well, over the last few years as well in Vasalopa, we've seen very tight finishes, haven't we? We've seen. Uh, a five for the for the line. Yeah, it's it's very hard, especially when it's fast condition to uh, get away. It's a little bit easier all the time to be in the in the back. You have the the wind, so it's a little bit easier there. And you also have the it's when one skier have uh, passed in the tracks, it's gonna be a little bit little bit warmer, and then it's gonna be a little bit faster as well. So then you have uh, two things to, uh, to get much faster if you are in the back of someone. So you see here at the start, it's, uh, it's one of the very few uh, climbs you could say in the course. It's generally a fairly flat course. Yeah, it's flat, but it still has some uh, uphills, but not uh, as big as this one. So it's around 150 meters climbing in 2K. So it's pretty steep. So for uh, uh, the average skier here, it's yeah, it's a tough, tough uh, hill. Yeah. Not a nice way to start, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 1k flat and then come into the uphill. So here the Russian guy Vasiliev Rotchev. He's a world champion in uh, sprint from uh, Oberstdorf. So he ski for. Uh, 
Craft Russia, I think. Well, we saw 12 months ago, we saw one young Norwegian really get off to a, a fiery start, a bit of television time yeah. for him. <laughs> he really did come out all guns blazing. He had quite a comfortable lead too, but it was uh, soon eaten up by, by, the, by the big guns, you could say. But you can see here in the top group, uh, most of the people just uh, go diagonal, so they have uh, kick wax. Very slow. This is right back at the very start, and uh, well, they're not using too much energy at the moment. Those no. guys. But just back to that first uh, climb for these participants of the 90-kilometer course. 25% is considered uphill, so that's about 22.2 kilometers. 43% is considered level, which is about 38.6 kilometers of the race, and. Well, 32% is downhill, and that's about 29.2 kilometers. So that's how the track is set up here for Vasilopit. I think we are at the very end here of the, of the group, on the very back. And these are the people who certainly won't be pushing for a podium place come uh, <laughs> Mora, that's for sure. So back at the front, our leading pack. You see Daniel Finalis up in the lead. Well, he's had some fantastic results here in the past, of course. 36-year-old. Three, three times he has won the race before. Yeah, 2002, 2006, 2009. This is his 13th Vasilopit. In fact, his 10-year anniversary since he first won the race. So. He's had some very good results here over the past 12 months ago. He crossed the line in 20th place, 3 hours, 58 minutes and 35 seconds. Yeah, we talked a little bit, a bit uh, before we go on air about Daniel Tunnell. Uh, and I said, uh, you never can't uh, say Daniel Tunnell is uh, uh, he's always a threat to the, to the, to the victory because he can be sick for a whole year and then train a couple of weeks and then maybe he can go and win the race. So. It's a nat natural athlete. He's, uh, he's only been in two ski classics so far in 2012. He, he was at the first one in the Czech Republic, Szyszowska Parasaska, where he finished in 20th position. And he was also in Germany at the Konig Lubitlauf, where he finished in 15th place, so not his best results. Now it's a nice view here from the from the back of the group and now up to the to the elite. So that's a nice view just to see all skiers. That's absolutely wonderful to watch. It really is a beautiful part of the world here in Dalarna. And there we go. There goes our leaders. Continuing to double hole there is uh, Tinel. And then you have Elda running as uh, third place after Vasiliev Rotchev. And to the right you have uh, Martin Liljemark as well. From uh, Torsby. I haven't seen too much of the top teams yet. Team Extra Personnel of course who are who are leading the way as ski classics. They were victorious in 2011. Team Xperit as well, of course. And of course, the, the black and yellow of Team United Bakeries from Norway.
So it's pretty typical uh, Swedish uh, weather in March now. It's uh, pretty cold in the uh, valley, and then you come up for the first hill, and it's maybe five, six degrees warmer. And it's a uh, cold morning, like uh, 10 degrees uh, cold, and then uh, lunchtime is going to be uh, plus degrees, maybe one, two plus. Do you see uh, these conditions as being very similar to any of your races that you've partake in over the past? Yes, like 2005 and then it was uh, pretty similar and it was 13 degrees uh, cold in the morning and then it was uh, plus uh, one degrees at, at finish. So. Okay. That's uh, also going to be a little bit difficult for uh, the average skier. Oh, definitely. Because it's very hard to wax the ski with a, with a kick, kick wax uh, when it's passing uh, zero degrees, when it starts to be a little bit wet in the snow. So 2005, you crossed the line in 3 hours, 51 minutes, 48 seconds. We'll see a similar time today. Yeah, I think so. And maybe, maybe even a couple of minutes faster. Mm -hmm. I think to uh, beat the record time, uh, I think there uh, have to be a little bit more wind. Mm -hmm. Of course, back in 2005, unfortunately for yourself, second place to Oscar Svart. And of course, it's a shame that he cannot join us. He's not in the race today. No, he's been uh, sick for nearly a whole season, so it's... Uh, very sad that not going to see Oscar. Oscar has been very good uh, Vasalop skier. He's always been in the nearly top 10 uh, every time he started. Well, he's, he's partaken in 13 Vasalopets now every year since 1999. And while his worst finish was ninth place in 1999. So that is That's very, very impressive. Amazing. <laughs> of course, a three time winner. Picking up the titles in 2003, 2005, and 2007. And well, it's a big loss not to have the 35 year old Swede here in Barcelona. It's just not quite the same, is it, really? Yeah. Now they have done the first uphill and uh, heading uh, down uh, to the swamps and easy part of the, of the track. So now we see here Bill Impula from uh, Marlon here in Dalarna. He's looking like he's uh, building a little bit of a lead. 20 meters at the moment. So it's uh, normal to have uh, some skiers uh, at the start of the race to uh, be uh, doing some breakouts and so on. But uh, normally they're going to be uh, catched pretty soon pretty when soon. it starts to be uh, to, uh, heading against the finish. I suppose an early breakout doesn't worry the top guys at all, really. They, no. they don't get too uh, beat I up about it. They know they pretty much yeah. pull them in. And the youngsters wants to be in the television for a while <laughs> and so on. So. Some celebrity time, you could say. Yeah. But it's nice for, uh, for the race. Uh, it's fast from the beginning. So it's good for the race to have these uh, breakouts uh, and so on. Oh, definitely. I mean, you could almost compare it, I suppose, to athletics as well with the long distance where you have a, have a, a person who's just in the race to set the pace, to get the runners uh, running at a good pace and try and beat good times. You see here, the uh, group is uh, breaking up a little bit. So uh, normally there's going to be a much bigger group in maybe 5K here. So that can be around maybe 100, 150 people. And then it's just dropping off people, especially uh, when you're uh, passing uh, Tan Nang and passing Mons Budana after the first uh, ski classic sprint. Yeah. The big guys at the moment just in the back of this a main pack at the moment. Well, for those of you who are watching this, of course, and watching it on the Ski Classics webpage via the live streaming, of course, you're more than welcome to log on to Facebook if you do have it. 
and uh, ask some questions of myself and Martin. She might have some questions for Martin, of course, who has a lot of experience in this race. Well, let us know who you think is going to cross the line in first place come Mora after 90 kilometers. I think Jürgen Brink is going to be uh, absolutely uh, heading for the victory today. And also we're going to look out for uh, Daniel Tenell and also the Outlands brothers. How, how important is, uh, is confidence for these guys? Of course, it, for Jürgen Brink, I just think it's before Ski Classics number four, it was quite a, a disappointing start to the year, you could say, a 30th place in the Czech Republic. Uh, he did a little bit better at Marcia Longa, where he finished in sixth place. And uh, he wasn't in Germany, of course, but then he came back strong and won Tartu. It was almost like he was timing it, you could say. Uh, it's a little bit the same as uh, Daniel Tinell. They uh, can be sick for a while and then they come back and be in the top, so that's amazing. And guys that Daniel Tinell, Jürgen Brink and so on, they have uh, the mentality to to take a victory. I think it's harder for uh, like guys, Jimmy Johnson, that's uh, third place in the Ski Classic overall so far, has been on the podium a couple of times. I think he has to have a victory uh, first. So, so he to push on, to yeah, give you the confidence. And confidence just to see it's not hard to, to take the last bit. The first one's the hardest and after that it's a... Uh... Yeah, I think so. Well, interesting you say that because, I mean, when you look at all the favourites for this race, uh, a lot of them have been around a very long time. Of yeah. course, Jürgen Brink, 36 years of age, and uh, the Auckland brothers as well. Anders, of course, 39 years of age. His brother, Jürgen, 36 years of age. Uh, they've been around a long time, whereas, as you say, Jimmy Jonsson, a younger competitor, you could say, at just 26 years of age. And, it's uh, it's incredible. There's not too many sports where the older heads pretty much dominate the, the races. Uh, if you're in a different sport or so on, it's 26. You maybe are uh, better on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, but in tough sport is uh, and uh, like uh, marathon, uh, triathlon, and so on. It takes time to be uh, really, really good. It makes it take. 10 years of hard training to uh, to reach your maximum capacity. Of course, uh, a lot of these guys have done the, the shorter distance when they were younger, yeah. competing for their represent like for their respective countries, of course. But uh, it's a little bit interesting uh, when the ski classic uh, entered uh, the World Cup, but then the Fizz Marathon uh, Cup and the long distance races. It's had changed a little bit, so youngsters start to uh, to to go for long distance directly mm. instead of uh, going traditional skiing like 10, 15k, 30k. Uh, so it's a little bit more money. Uh, team uh, uh, big, bigger teams, mm. so they have the opportunity to train full time and just racing and go for uh, long distance races. A couple of years ago, it was. It was not just Vasaloppet, but it was not any big races or TV broadcasting from the long distance races. Now we have Ski Classic and uh, broadcast the most of the races, all races. So that's an uh, opportunity for youngsters to be to go for uh, long distance direct directly. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you because it is interesting when you look at it, all the younger guys. It, I was wondering if it was more a prestige thing, of course, representing Sweden, representing Norway and trying to go to these world championships and Olympics, of course, or, or was it a money situation? And uh, you, you mentioned there wasn't too much money in it before for the longer distance, but uh, certainly it is changing. Yeah, as, uh, as we talked uh, not here before, but uh, we discussed it yesterday, there is uh, a World Cup in Lachtis, so Barcelona had much more media time uh, compared to the World Cup. So uh, the long distance is, is going to be bigger and bigger. Yeah. And uh, among uh, especially Swedish people that uh, normally know someone who uh, raced Vasaloppet, 
you get more respect with a better result in Vasaloppet compared to the World Cup. That's interesting. Now, of course, now, you know, with the, the teams and as it's getting bigger and as you say, all these races are now televised worldwide and uh, it opens up more sponsorship. It opens these youngsters to, to sign up with teams like Team Extra Personnel, Team Experience. Um, and as you say, more money, more sponsorship. And, and for me personally, I can just see the ski classics getting stronger and stronger each and every year. Yeah, it's good for the, for the ski sport. Have more people uh, training on uh, full time as professionals. It's uh, it's going to be better and better. More people are in the top and more interesting races, and uh, not just uh, five people that uh, can be winning. Yeah. Now we have maybe 20, 25, but you have uh, yeah, as we discussed before, maybe five favorites. Yeah. Five favorites. Yeah. And of course, as well, I mean, it must have been fairly hard to get sponsorship as an individual if you were doing these longer distances, being yeah. outside of a team. Yeah, then you have to be really, really good. Like, uh, Tunnel has been alone in his team before. Uh, and then uh, for last year, he uh, do a team with his brother, Rickard. Yeah. So, and uh, he's doing a big... Uh, uh, go as well. Uh, uh, they have a big waxing trailer, okay. so they're heading around the middle Europe to all races with the. Uh, yeah, it's it's amazing. It's a cool. old uh, uh, rally ca uh, trailer that have okay, a, yeah. so it can bring in the the own car in the back. <laughs> <laughs> so they set a new standard for uh, waxing in the long distance races. Uh, so it's like the world championship uh, in like it is in the traditional scheme yeah because a lot of these guys now only competing really in ski classic races yeah we saw the seaman Ostensen from uh, team extra personnel was in the lead so I think you're gonna help uh, the Outlands brothers today it didn't feel very well uh, during this week I'll talk to the manager Nils Marius Uttesta this morning. And that's something we, we may see. Of course, it is still early days of a team environment, you could say, uh, in ski classics. And it, can you see it going more in the style of, let's say, uh, cycling, like Tour de France, where you have certain skiers with designated roles? You could have someone who goes out strong and looks after your star. Can you see it going that way at all, or do you think it's going to continue one for all? No, nah, it's... They have a long way to go to be in, like, in the cycling teams. But uh, it's heading at, at that direction, I think. So it's still uh, an individual sport, but it's in, in the team. So if you not have a, a very good day, absolutely, you help the teammates yeah. to do a good... Uh, uh, position in the race, and I have a position in the race. You can hear the sound from the the poles. It's cold and dry. <laughs> you can see there, in about position number five at the moment with the green bib. That is Jerry Arlin. He's currently sitting in second place in Ski Classic Sprint. He's wearing the green because Stanislav Rajak, of course, wearing the red bib. There you see Jerry Arlin in fourth place, or fifth place, I should say, at the moment. Second place is uh, Sven Halvor Dahl from Norway. So there's a lot of Swedish and Norwegian skier in the top here. But we also see skier from Italian and so on in the top as well. 
especially in the long distance, they are really good in uh, skating. Mm. Well, it's quite funny because you, all the races, of course, you see a strong presence, of course, of Swedish skiers and Norwegian skiers, but then you have that one Czech skier who is leading yeah. <laughs> at the moment <laughs> as ski classes, of course, and he's defending champion from uh, 2011. How do, how do the Czech skiers do in the, the other forms? Uh, actually, Martin Kokal uh, is uh, winning uh, the final de uh, the week before okay. in the World Loppet thing. So they in is included in uh, this Marathon Cup. So, so Martin Kokalo uh, is racing here as well, so he's been uh, world champion in uh, the 50k in Val de Fien. Okay. 2003. So we definitely have some talented skiers for sure. For sure, and he has uh, fourth place uh, in the Basel Open 2005 as well. Okay. Of course, Stanislav Rajak, one of the, the older heads as well, 38 years of age. This is his 14th Basel Open. Four times he's been on the podium, and three of those have been in the last three years. Of course, a runner-up last year by just the one second. So he'll be looking for his first ever victory in Barcelopet. So we come to first at timing station, small gun, after well, 10.5 kilometers. It's not just a, a drink station, it's also a, a sprint, so they can earn 5,000 Swedish crowns. So it's like a little bit more than 500 euro. Okay. And that's the first of four sprints, isn't it, for the Vassalopet race? Yeah, it's uh, even more, I think. Smågan, Mångsbodarna, Riesberg, Eversberg, Uxberg, Högberg and then Eldris. So okay. it's totally seven. Okay. But this is not including in the Ski Classic, so it's a Ski course. Classic sprints is in uh, uh, Mongsbudan after 26k, and then you have Eversberg at 47k. Now we have uh, 168 or something, it's a uh, skier from Falun Bolänge, 180 or something. See Ricard Andreasen there as well from uh, Team Experit. Well, Smorgan was introduced as a control station in the, the Vasa Lopet in 1983. the only control station in fact in the race that's not situated in a village on the route now you see it's 200 meters left to the sprint price and 500 euro so it's a Mura guy he's pushing hard too he's got quite a, a comfortable lead Nine minutes, 23.5 seconds, Gustafsson crosses after 10.5 kilometers in Smorgan. Jerry Alin, 10th place at the moment. Tinel still up there, 16th. Pretty much all the big guys in the pack. 22nd, our defending two-time champion, Jürgen Brink. Stanislav Rajak as well, 26th place. to Auckland brothers side by side at the moment. Yeah, See Rickardson as well, of course uh, Olympic gold medalist. So pretty much all the big guys are there or thereabouts at the moment. 
Yeah, they have to be in the, the big group here, otherwise they have a little bit too much work to do. So, Victor Gustafsson from Mora is 29-23, uh, so it's uh, l uh, looking like it's going to be a pretty fast race. So they're passing Smogan at a record time, 1998, at uh, 28 minutes. Okay. Anton Schoholm quite far back at the moment from Team Expert in position number 90. The youngster had a very good showing here last year. In fact, finishing in sixth place in his first Vasa Lopet, the 24-year-old. New signing, well, a late signing, I should say, into Team Expert at the end of last year. He ended up winning the overall ski classics for the youth. Been a little bit of an up and down year for the youngsters so far. 24th place showing in the Czech Republic, 26th place in Marcialonga. Currently sitting in 37th position in the overall ski classics table. A lot of work ahead. He's to repeat his sixth place from 12 months ago. So it's pretty typical uh, part of the track you see up to the top left there is pretty flat parts. So Vibeke is through this leading. So Vibeke Skofteru is a Norwegian girl uh, uh, going the World Cup and so on. So it's, she's a uh, was third place in the World Cup before, but now she has dropped the, the last uh, races and after uh, uh, the Tour de Ski. And it's her first race in Ski Classics. Yeah. So it's a lot of uh, World Cup skiers that uh, go for Vasa Lopet. So as uh, we mentioned before, uh, Vasa Lopet is, is much bigger than a, than a World Cup. So here we see Jenny Hansson from Team Xperit. Of course, the defending champion from 12 months ago and 42.6 seconds behind at the moment. Well, these World Cup skiers that you talk about, it must be a, a huge test for them to, to do a 90 kilometer race. Yeah, it is. Uh, many people have tried, but uh, most of them has also failed. <laughs> so that they have not even been uh, like top 100 or top 50. So uh, if you're winning the Olympic uh, gold medal, you maybe try to go the Vasa Lopet the next year or the same year. And then you just, oh, it's too long, it's too hard. If you're not used to the distance, it's uh, going to be very tough to be in the top after 90k or the last 20k is tough. Because, uh, I mean, it's definitely a big disadvantage compared to the guys who race in the ski classics throughout the year, of course. I mean, you start at the Jesuska Parasaska, which is 50 kilometers, and Masialonga, 70 kilometers, and then Kone uh, Ludwig Lauf, another 50 kilometers, and then, of course, the last one, Tatu, which is 63 kilometers. So it's a good build up. Yeah. For those guys and they also train the whole year before just to uh, go long distance races and it's a lot of uh, you, you, as you see here double pulling with the upper body and uh, the stomach strength you need to have because so we talk about world cup participants in Vasalop and the big news of course uh, coming into Vasalop it was Peter Nortu yeah. who's going to take part unfortunately uh, is not here uh, due to stomach illness it has been very interesting to, to see him here, but as you said, sad to, that he's gonna that he was sick. Because he raced in uh, Masialonga, and uh, that last two kilometers, the Cascada Crime or whatever you call it, he, he really had nothing. <laughs> he no, really struggled. Finished in tenth place, which is still fairly impressive. But uh, that's uh, funny to hear people that discuss. If you win a World Cup or an Olympic game or something, people think that they can win everything <laughs> that has to with skiing. But it's yeah, it's a, like in track and field. 
if you win 100 meters uh, in the sprint. It's not used to uh, win the, the marathon as well. <laughs> no, de definitely not. <laughs> definitely, definitely not. I'd love to see uh, Usain Bolt do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, with the comparison to athletics as well, I mean, that's the joy of, of races like this where your everyday Joe Blog, you could say, is at the starting line with the big guys in the sport, which you don't see at any other sport in the world. Uh, I mean, we can't go and line up against Bolt in 100 metres uh, at any point, can we? But <laughs> So it certainly is a special part of a cross-country skiing where average skiers could be on the starting line, although they won't see the top guys for very long. In fact, they probably don't see them at all, but... It's a little bit of kind of different sport uh, with the distance and uh, how the the track uh, is. It's not uh, like a World Cup the course that is up and down, up and down, up and down, all nearly all the time. Here we have uh, long, long flat parts. As you see, it, it's uh, uh, like big swamps, uh, lakes you're passing. So it's uh, most of the part is uh, pretty easy skiing. Mm. So it's. It's made for uh, average uh, people that is not training uh, full time or, or as a professional. And of course, they have a lot of races throughout the week as well, don't they? It's a, it's a yeah. big occasion. They have a relay, they have a, a, a skate park, they have a, a, just a girl race, they have the a half one, they have a short one that's just 30k. So, Barcelona is really big. And they had the 90 kilometer open. Open Last track as well, yeah. Didn't they? Sunday, Monday, they have a. So you're, you're free to start between uh, 7 and 8 okay. in the morning. And then uh, it's just to go. So it's uh, like Vasalop it is now 90k long, the same drink uh, station and so on. Yeah. And of course, everyone uh, has a chip on them. That's how we know uh, the times for yep. everyone. And then we see Martin Lilly Mark again. So it's from Trusby where they have the uh, ski tunnel, the indoor ski tunnel, okay. one of two in the world. So they have one in Germany as well. All right. So there is winter all year round, so Perfect. it's uh, skiable. Perfect training. And they see a, a tight pack leading the race at the moment. I think it's a little bit faster this year. There's a little bit less people in the pack. You see Stanislav Rajak there in the, the black suit, the red bib. I think it's uh, Sergei Shiryayev to the left, the Russian guy. It's a good start for the Russians. We haven't really seen too much of them in Ski Classics this year. So he's a really good skier and but he was uh, cancelled from all races because he was uh, caught by with the EPO doping. Okay. Well, I mentioned in the introduction that uh, people come from all over the world to partake in this great race. In 2012, we see some 37 nations represented. And it's incredible when you look at uh, the countries that have representatives here. Uh, one skier from New Zealand, one from the United Arab Emirates, one from Venezuela. It's uh, from all over the globe. 81 from the US. Can <coughs> Canada has uh, 26 participated. Norway, 2,990. That's uh, that's total 17, oh, 1,771 yeah, in, in the Vasalopet yeah, here today. This, this is uh, total for, for throughout the, the week. Denmark with the second most amount of foreigners, which is a bit of a surprise. Forty minutes they have been going, seventy-five point seven kilometers to go. I 
as we mentioned before, we talked about nation, but we also can talk about the regions here in Sweden. So normally we can say it's a bigger, a better winter up in north in Sweden, <laughs> but uh, most of the people uh, live in, in the south. So from Stockholm, it's uh, 2,341 uh, racing Vasaloppet. And the biggest club here in Vasaloppet uh, uh, is uh, Eko Stan from Gothenburg. Oh, that's Goth interesting. Gothenburg has not many skiable days uh, in a year. So here we have the standing in uh, Smågan. Here we saw Victor Gustafsson was leading. The Auckland brothers, 32-33. Yeah, side by side, Ricard Tinel as well, in that Rickardson. pack as well. Seen a little bit of movement since then, of course. Rajak has moved up to well, about third place at the moment. Well, for the woman, you see our defending champion in second place at the moment. So Bill Impola is uh, one of uh, three brothers' schemes. Uh, they changed club to uh, Marlon a couple of years ago and did uh, and the Marlon did a great uh, team uh, team goal. So. You see the, on the technique they are going pretty hard. So when you look back to 2005, where you had your outstanding second place showing here in Vasalopet, and you said similar conditions, what what was your tactic? How did you how did you take the race? I think it's most important to just uh, have as good race as possible. The the first 60k, so you're not up in the top do the, doing a, a, any big job. You just relax, save the energy, save the strength in your arms. Uh, go with the legs as much as possible to save, again, the strength in your arms. Uh, the last 30k, when it starts to be pretty fast, and uh, someone trying to get away, mm -hmm. you have to watch out. Mm -hmm. when, com uh, when do the, the winning, uh, winning go? Uh, so you have to be, be in that. So if there's some people that you don't think gonna win, just let them go, yeah. and we'll, you will catch them later. Yeah. So in the end, this, uh, we were 16 people when it's 2k left. So then it's very important to have a good position. Yeah. So we are in the very back in the in there. It's hard to go to be in the podium. Sure. So it's uh, okay. You, we look out here at the finish line. It's four tracks. So if there's 16 people, it's uh, you have to pass at least four four of people. Course. Yeah, yeah. And there to the right, you see Jerry Alin drinking. So it's very important to fill up with energy during the race because you burn a lot of uh, carbohydrates. And of course, they have the one lane for the road shut off as well, don't they? Along yeah. the route, so the respective team vans can get to each of the points to hand out the the liquid and everything like that. Yeah, after uh, when you reach Monskudan it's much easier to, to reach the track uh, because the first 19k it's uh, not any roads that's uh, quick to go back to, to the track again then you have to go back to the start okay. and up again and then you lose a lot of time. So you have to at least have to have uh, six cars to do a good uh, service during the race. I think this is uh, looks like Musgrave. I've seen the somewhat British of a, a slight pull away. Three skiers followed by four skiers with a bit of a lead back to that big pack. Jerry Orlin is in the group there with the green bib.
And right. here, uh, Stanislav Reshak as well on fourth place. So it's uh, Andrew Musgrave in the the top pair with two, uh, number 251. So Musgrave was in the Youth 23 Championship in Turkey uh, last week. Okay. That was actually there there as well, uh, waxing the ski for this national Swedish team. Okay. How did it go for the Swedish national team? Uh, better than expected. They were expecting uh, one medal, but uh, they got six of them. So. Wow, that's, uh, that's excellent. Good. So a few bright stars coming through for Sweden. Yeah, hopefully. Was there any big standout from any nation, really? The Russian is uh, very good uh, as juniors and uh, youth, mm -hmm. 23. So very strong. Well, we see Jerry Arlin there and uh, Modelaski Classics. I was very surprised with his poor finish, really. Uh, you expect him to finish so strong, uh, of course, on the double bowling. And, and he was in that main pack as they come to the finish line in Tatsu, but he just somewhat fell away, which was very surprising for the yeah. Swede. He finished in 14th place in the end, some 30 seconds behind. And, of course, he was the defending champion, couldn't defend his title. And I was very surprised that it really... I thought he would have finished a lot stronger. Yeah, here you see it is. No one uh, wants to do the work at, 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 <laughs> uh, at the front. So here the big uh, pack behind is catching them. So I'd say not say idiots to do this because they, they go really hard, uh, lose a lot of energy, and then uh, after just a couple of minutes they don't do anything. They're back to square one. <laughs> yeah. So if they go go a little bit harder and uh, do it for a longer while or do nothing, I would say. Okay, about TV time and so on, but if you want to be in the podium, Jerry Alin is uh, absolutely heading for the podium. Yeah, it's surprising that both himself and uh, Stanislav Rajak was following these uh, lesser known competitors, you could say. 211 is the Italian guy. And you see Reshak is drinking. You see here it's slow again and then uh, people uh, from the back uh, coming up again. It looked like Martin Roosevelt was uh, heading uh, towards the uh, the top of the pack. He's actually a professor. Professor? Yeah. Okay. He's studying in uh, Umeå University. So I've done like 10 years of studying. Okay, well. Wow. <laughs> so Umeå located in the northern part of Sweden. I'm still very surprised to what you said about a lot of the competitors coming from the south of Sweden. It's uh, yeah, They don't for, have the best of winters, do they? <laughs> average people coming from the south. Mm. Uh, that's a... Uh, Top athletes, they may be middle part of Sweden. Mm -hmm. Then they, many of them will go the World Cup and so on. It's, uh, they move to Östersund. So mm -hmm. many of them, uh, people in the national team for Sweden, living there. Okay. For uh, to have a little bit better winters and so on. Am I right in saying that Matthias Fredriksson's from the southern southern part of Sweden? Yeah. South, southern uh, middle part of Sweden. A little bit west of the big lake, Vänern, uh, okay. the biggest uh, lake in Sweden. Pretty close to uh, the Norwegian border, All right. Oslo. Well, speaking of Matthias Fredriksson, uh, how do you see his chances here today? Of course, uh, the news is it could be his very last Vasalopet. This is as well, he's, this is only his fifth Vasalopet, which is quite surprising, but of course he's represented Sweden for a very long time in the World Championships. and. Of course he has yeah, I think, 
think he has a pretty good chance, but I don't think he's going for the victory. Mm. I think uh, between three and uh, seven uh, is uh, very realistic for him. Uh, his current uh, best in the Vasilopit is the seventh placing in uh, 2008. Four hours, 23 minutes and 18 seconds. Twelve months ago, he finished in 18th position. So, uh, looking for a personal best, maybe, the 38-year-old. Matthias Fredriksson is actually going on the same brand as uh, I did, uh, Solomon skis. So okay. he, during the season here, he's borrowed some skis from mine. So he's raced on them on Marcia Long and König Ludwig Lauer. Okay, okay. But I actually don't know uh, how it's going to be today, if it's my old skis or not. So Marcia Long and König Ludwig Lauer for you your skis. So that was, yeah. he came 12th in Italy. Not bad which is well, the second best result of the year, and a 17th at the Koenig Lupin Lauf. So shall we say he good, did a good result <laughs> or a bad result <laughs> compared to the skis? <laughs> well, the Koenig Lupin Lauf, he was only 10.3 seconds behind the winner, so uh, That's it's still good. very good. So and this is some of, the, some of the highlights from the start, and uh, what a fantastic sight it is. 15,800 participants, and it's not... Very easy for some of them. And it really is wonderful to watch. And you see people wearing a yellow bib number. It could be Stanislav Reshak, uh, but also all the ladies. So all ladies have a yellow bib. Okay. So back here to live pitches now. Uh, sorry, Reshak has the red bib number. Yeah, I caught a little bit off guard with Rezek wearing the red, to be honest. I was expecting him to be wearing the gold bib, of course, he is the leader. But of course, he is leading the FIS uh, Marathon Cup as well. So. Yep. And Vasa Lopez is included uh, also in the Ski Classic and also FIS Marathon Cup. So it's like uh, two parallel cups. Yeah. Of course, Rezek leading both of them as well. Yeah, he's actually leading with the 345 points in FIS Marathon Cup uh, before Jürgen Aukland at 256 points. And while in Ski Classics, he's, well, he's on 600 points, Jürgen Aukland on 512. And with regards to points in the Ski Classics, well, it's, uh, it's of course from every race. For the winner, you pick up 200 points. Second place gets 160. Third place, 120. Fourth place, 100. And then you go down by 10 points from there. So position number 10 before it drops by a single point. Also Rajak with two wins already in ski classics this year. Zuzinska Parasaska on home soil and also in Germany in the third ski classics. Some, some good prize money up for grabs as well in Ski Classics. Yeah. Total prize money for the for the competition is uh, 110,000 euro. And I think the, the winner takes 20% uh, of that. Uh, that's some. Yeah, the winner takes. Is... Yeah, winner takes 20% of the prize money for both men and women. Uh, for the winning team, they get 20% of the prize money as well. The Ski Classic Sprint winner gets 6% of the total prize money. Well, the Ski Classics Youth Men's winner picks up 1% prize money and the same for the woman. Musgrave is uh, going pretty hard here. Try to do a breakout. A couple of K before uh, the first uh, sprint in Ski Classic at Mons Budana. Yeah, 
is looking pretty strong. It's uh, fun to see that Great Britain can have a good skier. <laughs> Just doesn't seem right, does it? <laughs> <laughs> I actually live in Norway and uh, study there in, I think it's Trondheim. Okay. Not 100% sure, but. You can see a different uh, double pulling technique is uh, pretty straight, uh, straight arms when you put the poles in the uh, snow compared to, uh, for example, uh, Jerry Arlin. They have the hands pretty close to his shoulders. And which which is better in terms of uh, maybe energy wise? For energy sufficient, I think it's uh, good to have the a little bit in the movements you have to have the hands pretty close to the to the shoulders because you are much stronger uh, close to the body sure but it takes a couple of uh, uh, hundreds of seconds to build up power sure so if you put out the hands pretty close to the to the shoulders you don't have the time to push yeah so you have to have a little bit as you see in Musgrave here straight uh, straight arms and hands uh, at the start and then you uh, put the elbow to be a little bit uh, you decrease the the angle okay. of the el elbow yeah but I'm very very surprised to see Stanislav Vrajak here going with these uh, two guys and okay he's absolutely killing the sprint section at the moment on uh, ski classics he is he has a whopping lead. He has 115 points, with second place Jerry Alin has 58 points. But it's come back to really bite him on the butt, you could say. I remember Marcia Longa, where he went hard for the sprint, and then he had nothing come, yeah. come the end of the race, although he did still finish in third place. But I'm sure he could have finished higher up if he uh, conserved a little bit of energy. And uh, second place, we see Anders Palmier. Uh, actually a firefighter okay and then we see Daniel Tenel again very comfortable you see you have one two three four five five competitors from Team United Bakeries there as well looks in the yellow and black and then to the right you see the extra personnel guys from Norway Outland Brothers and Seaman Estensen, I think he was in the top there. They have a really good setup, don't they, Team Extra Personnel? Of course, they got the big uh, experienced guys, but they also got some some youngsters who are com coming through as well. They got the 28 year old Damin, who is wearing bib number 46 today. He's currently seventh in uh, ski classics, but also their youth skiers as well. Got the leader, Christopher Cullison. He'll be wearing the pink bib. He's just 23 years of age. They got the 20-year-old Anderson as well, and Hoist as well, who's currently fourth in the youth. So they've got a good setup. Yeah, they start to be a pretty big team. They just started with the Outland brothers, but now it's uh, increased a lot. And extra personnel, it's an insurance company or...? I think they rent out uh, uh, people ah, for... Yeah, the staffing firm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that makes sense, extra personnel, yeah. yeah. Now it's not long uh, before you reach uh, Mongskodana, the second drink station and the first sprint in uh, Ski Classic. Yep, 26 kilometers. Some, uh, some of the most uh, beautiful scenery along the track too around this area, isn't it? It's a natural reserve, nature reserve I should say. Now they just have a small, small uphill here, and then they have a little bit longer downhill, and then they reach Mongsbudana. So at this point, when you're crossing 26 kilometers, do you know 
how you're going to finish up. Do you know how how the body is, how the energy levels are? No, not it's still at all. early days. It's too early. You get uh, can uh, be smashed later on, or you can <laughs> wake up. You can have a bad day. You feel <laughs> oh, this is going to be a tough day, but then you wake up maybe uh, one two hours yeah. later. I suppose it is an early start to the morning, so some of these might be a, a late riser. And we see, and then the Anders Palmier taking it. He's going to take it. Yep. Yeah. And Ajak, no surprise up there as well. He crosses in third place. Uh, Musgrave on the result list there, but I think I thought it was uh, Anders Palmer in the middle. Well, it was very tight. The three of them going for the points. Jimmy Johnson at tenth place. Of course, for the sprint, you pick up the first male athlete across the line, picks up 20 points, 15 points for second, 10 for third, five for fourth, and three points for fifth. And some more points there, going to our leader, Stanislav Rajak, once again. We're going to see how many people there are in the front group here. And the, the chasing pack. So we're up in 50 places now. Quite a big pack, isn't it? So roughly about 60. Yeah. But Stanislav Rejak is uh, just dropping off there. He <laughs> was uh, just heading uh, for the sprint and then uh, <laughs> relax and uh, go, go back, back and have a rest now. Yeah. So now you're from Mongspoona, you have pretty easy skiing. Sl slightly and pretty steep downhills for like for 4k and then you come to uh, most of the years the coldest place Tenneng. okay and then you have uh, some uh, bigger climb or slightly uphill for a while uh, before you reach uh, Riesberg after 34k because that will be the, the third sprint in the Vasalopper of course that will be in Eversberg, uh, the, the drink station uh, after, at okay, 47k. Yep. Yep. So before uh, Eversberg you go out uh, on the lakes, so it's flat, and then the last uh, bit, maybe the last k, is uphill then up to Eversberg now. It's a good glide on this Palmer. Are you a bit surprised to see him out the front this early? Or? No, he has a, he is a really good skier, so he's been top 10 for Vasa Loppet hmm. a couple of years ago. Getting very, oi, oi. very tight there. Oi. Oi, oi, oi. Ending in the forest, is he? <laughs> <laughs> well, just recovering in time. Now, when it's uh, very fast and downhill, it's uh, much easier to uh, to be in the pack. Yeah, it's just uh, to glide. So when you're going up to maybe 50k per an hour, then it's uh, the wind. Uh, if you are in the back, it's much particular of a wind. Mm. But if uh, you're in the in the, in the lead, you have to take the wind by yourself. Sure. It's very similar, of course, the cycling as well. Yeah. You've got the That's guys out the front, and it's almost a gentleman's agreement, isn't it, to, to mm. share the lead, although it's a, yeah. a bit debatable sometimes. <laughs> but here in Basel, uh, uh, as you said, mentioned before, uh, the average speed on the record time was 26k uh, per an hour. Mm. But in bicycle, they uh, normally have uh, a little bit uh, above uh, 40 and uh, close to 50 sometimes. What would be the fastest speed that these guys will get to in this race? I think around 65, 70k. Wow. Well, 
I hope uh, old mate before wasn't going about that speed <laughs> into the forest. <laughs> Just under 64 kilometers to go on this 90 kilometer race. 88th edition of uh, Vassalopit, and it's, it's a big deal here in Sweden, isn't it? Yeah, if you see it, the Swedish people, uh, it's many people that just uh, sitting down, eating breakfast, looking at Vassalopit. So it's uh, around two and a half million, or a little bit more than two and a half million. Now we see Jenny Hansson passing here. Now in the lead, so where is Vibeke Skofterud who was leading in the uh, small van? It's been a good run for Jenny Hansson. Yeah, very good. Defending champion, of course. And here you see Vibeke Skofterud in yellow bib. And second place, 37.4 seconds, and well, that she's that's almost about a minute 20 since the last time station that uh, that Hansen has ca caught up and taken the lead. She was trailing by about 40 odd seconds. Yep. As I mentioned before, it's very popular to watch the Vasa uh, Loppet for uh, Swedish people, so they have uh, nearly. Uh, a little bit less than one third of the population watching this race so that's absolutely incredible isn't it yeah <laughs> and it's start to be really big in uh, norway as well of course uh, the host broadcaster here svt showing this live of course around sweden got uh, norwegian television here as well i think this is uh, one of the bigger uh, events uh, there's uh, Swedish tele television have actually during the, uh, the year uh, on the sports side because it's 90k long and uh, how you stream it uh, out and so on it's not very easy so there's a lot of uh, TV guys here yeah uh, both uh, Mura and Selen I hear that they've uh, put in a fiber link right through the 90 kilometer course yeah which makes it easier for the television to yeah to get the pictures. So that's a little bit of work to do to dig 90k. <laughs> <laughs> Big investment too. For sure. Just for a sport race <laughs> once a year. Yeah. So let's see in the lead there, the 33 year old Thomas Hendriksen from Norway and Team United Bakery is currently 13th position in Ski Classics. Best result this year was at eighth place showing the Kone Lupe Lauf in Germany, just 6.8 seconds behind the winner. He was 10th in the last Ski Classics in Estonia. Well, his best result in Vasilopit so far in his career is a 14th place, and that was, well, 12 months ago. So two guys there from Team United Bakeries in the lead. See a couple of, well, at least, yeah, a couple of guys there from Team Expirit as well. Jimmy Johnson and uh, Rickard Andreasen, and then you have Daniel Tunnell going ch uh, the change tracks there. So now you have done the, the easy part, the downhills, and you are actually in Tanning now. So here after, uh, now we're going to see the sprint seals first here. I think it's uh, for sure it's wow. Anders Palmer in the in the middle track there. Yeah. It looks like Rajak second, yeah. maybe third. It was tight between himself. Yep, they yeah. have changed now. It's so strange to see a British flag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the guys in that uh, chasing pack, of course. In Poland there, he was uh, in the lead for a bit. Ricard Andreasen. Jürgen Brink, 29th position. Did we see two of the Tino uh, Tano brothers there? Yeah, we saw so uh, his also younger brother as well. Yeah, younger, ten-year uh, younger brother, uh, Rick and Tino. He has not uh, any 
victories in Vasaloppet, uh, so he has the, a little bit work to do to be in the absolutely top. Yeah, it's pretty tough to follow in his older brother's footsteps, that's for sure. Yeah. So it's Prince Standings, 130 points. Look at that lead for Ranaschak. That is absolutely impressive. And while we're just two more races to go on Ski Classics, you can safely say that is signed, sealed and delivered for the Czech. As I started to mention before, uh, they were were in Tenning and now they are heading against uh, Riesberg. And uh, now you have uh, slightly uh, uphills for a while. So normally it can be a breakout and it can be a winning breakout from, from this point. So here you see uh, all the top athletes uh, is uh, in the top here. So it's changed from uh, uh, the start of the race. They were more in the back. Uh, except uh, Reshak and Jerry Arlen. But now they're heading against the top pair, and if they're going to be a breakout, they have to, uh, to join that, if mm. they think it's uh, a winning breakout. Yeah. You see Jürgen Auckland to the left here, going pretty hard. Yeah, we didn't see too many of the teams earlier on, did we? But now we Nine. see, look, uh, we see a lot of Team Extra personnel. We see the Team Tynell, of course, Team United Bakeries there, Team Xperit, the, 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 the main big teams as well. For sure. So, for the uh, not uh, experienced uh, youngsters, it's going to be a tough uh, part to join the pack now. Well, we see the younger of the Auckland brothers in the lead at the moment. Three years the junior to Anders is Jürgen Auckland. Currently in second position in skiing classics. Been a good year for him so far. He finished in well, a disappointing eighth place overall last year, which I'm sure he wasn't too happy about. Of course, a former winner here in the Vassal Open 2008. Crossing the line in a winning time of 4 hours 13 minutes 45 seconds. So then uh, Jerry Arlin was double pulling just all the way and it was a very bad condition. So then uh, the Oakland brothers uh, went on uh, no kick wax, just to have a sandpaper on the on the kick wax zone. So okay. I have much better uh, skis than uh, Jerry Allen. So yeah. Jerry Oakland was uh, winning pretty easily and comfortable. Yeah. Uh, of course, I mean it's the setup of the skis is is vital, isn't it? I yeah, mean, for sure. It's 90k long and it's a fast race compared to a World Cup. So uh, if you have a little bit bad glide, then you're, uh, yeah, you're gonna be tired in the end for yeah. sure. So remember back to the first ski classics of the year, uh, the Jesuska Parasanska for the women of uh, Team Spirit, they didn't quite have the right setup, so yeah. they say, and they had very disappointing showing. To uh, Nistrum in seventh place and uh, Hansen crossing in third place but uh, they just couldn't keep up with uh, Cyrus Fenson across yeah. the line in first position. And they were far in the back, uh, a, a big time gap uh, in the Sarsken and yeah. I'm a little bit impressed of uh, Daniel Tunnell's uh, action today. It looks really comfortable when uh, when uh, Jerry Olin was in the top and go pretty hard. It was uh, pretty relaxed behind mm. so it's got such a big upper body doesn't he yeah he, he's, he, he looks definitely. a lot more solid than uh, Alklin is in second place at the moment and the other guys as well he he looks a lot more solid a lot more muscular you could say yeah he's a uh, 91 uh, k heavy okay right. so it's not a small guy not a small guy at all to be a sportsman in the <laughs> in this so tough sport he could uh, okay. easily take the rugby field or yeah <laughs> in cycling and uh, running and uh, these kind of sports it's pretty small guys normally yeah so to be a skier is a big guy what would the average weight be right roughly for these top guys I suppose they all roughly have. I would say around 80 So a lot less than uh, ice hockey and this kind of sports and <laughs> American football.
Thomas Hendriksen from United Bakeries. He has been uh, in the top 10, top 20 in uh, many years now in the long distance races. So he's uh, pretty experienced. Yeah, uh, uh, not been on the podium. No. Not, not this year and not uh, in the history of Varsalop. It is uh, best place, as mentioned, 14th position 12 months ago. Best result this year was an 8th place at the, the Conny Lauf. You got a 10th place finish at the uh, Tatu Marathon. Started the year off very disappointing with a 35th placing the Jezuska Parasaska, some 8 minutes 11 seconds behind Rajak. You mentioned it uh, at the start, uh, so it's a historical race that uh, uh, since the King Gustav Vasa, and uh, before he went King, he uh, has an escape from uh, Mura to Salem. And then uh, in the newspaper, a guy uh, mentioned this uh, in 1921, I think. So the year after, in 1922, they uh, thought to have uh, this Vasalop race, but then they changed uh, from, instead of going from Mura to Sälen, they go from Sälen to Mura. Okay. And Vasalop was, was born. Ah, it's a tremendous amount of history. One of the oldest, of course, in the ski country uh, races. And yeah, can. Gustav Vasa in 1920 escaping the invading troops of Christian II, King of Denmark. Yeah. Trying to get away. And from what I hear, he came through the town and the locals didn't really want to help him. So he continued on his merry ways and then they changed their mind. Yeah. And they sent out their two fastest skiers to catch up with him. And then, uh, yeah, interesting story. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of history. That was the time before cars and so on. Yeah, just a, <laughs> just a little bit before. <laughs> you see here now the pack is uh, cracking up a little bit, so they start to ski in one track, and that's uh, often a sign of uh, that it's going pretty fast. It looks like uh, Damin now in the lead from Team extra personnel twenty eight year old new into the team this year for team extra personnel currently seventh in uh, ski classics is best showing this year fifth placing with the Kone Lube of course that was the, the very tight finish there in Germany just three point two seconds behind the winner never really challenged the podium the young Norwegian and his Sixth, Russell Loppet. Best showing so far is a uh, 22nd placing in 2009 and 2008. I saw an interview yesterday with uh, Jenny Hansen talking about the, the conditions and everything like that for this race. And she mentioned she prefers wintry conditions when she races. What was she meaning by that? She prefers it to be a lot colder and we saw, uh, was it, uh, what race was it this year? In Germany, when it was about minus 20 degrees, it was absolutely freezing. Yeah, that was really cold. Um, and they said the official uh, temp was around 20 degrees, but uh, some parts of the track was like minus 26. And then Oof. I think it started to be really cold. Oh, yeah. And there was a big warning for the participants in their race to... to uh, to get themselves prepared for it, to um, yeah, cover the face a and risk to uh, get uh, freezing in the in the face, yeah. to get uh, injuries from that, and also uh, the lungs, of course, to uh, ventilate in maybe 200 liters in a second, mm -hmm. uh, in a minute, sorry, uh, for so long uh, time, yeah. it's gonna hurt the lungs. So some people, when it's so cold, get problems for the rest of their lives. So people should uh, think about uh, go races in very cold condition. Oh, it's very, very dangerous, of course. And I, I was quite surprised, to be honest, to see uh, Oscar Svard racing that one, to be honest, in his first race of the year. 
when, since he's been sick all year, I was very surprised to see him race in that. I mean, it yeah. was, and then he was sick again. So. And then he was sick again. It's, uh, so he has a stomach problem. I don't actually know uh, what the problem is, but he has some uh, parasites in the stomach and so on. So. I'm not a doctor, so I just yeah. a former <laughs> skier. <laughs> well, I was wanting you to give me your medical opinion, so uh, I want well, to I ask think you that. You have a medical <laughs> medical opinion on Sandra Hansen, or yeah, yeah, she has been sick for a while uh, during this re uh, year. And yeah, well, she hasn't, of course, raced this year, um, which is disappointing after such a strong year last year. Of course, she was with the Team United Bakeries last year with Team uh, Molvin this year her own team and uh, well she's got mononucleosis which is unfortunate of course she is a, a two-time winner here in Varsalopit as well she did the double in 2008 2009 second placing in 2010 wasn't here last year so of course we wish Sandra all the best and a speedy recovery from her illness you got to see her on the course again and try and challenge these team expert girls yeah it's a little bit too much uh, team spirit on the girls side uh, I think so it's better for the sport if it's uh, a team fight so now uh, on some races there has been triple up for uh, team spirit it's very good for team spirit but uh, for the for the sport it's better if it's a uh, not fight on every race, maybe, but uh, uh, most of the races there has to be some excitement. But definitely, it, it is team spirit domination for the woman at the moment. Of course, as the last couple of races have been one, two, three for team spirit. Of course, with uh, Serena Bona joining the team as well. Uh, of course, she didn't. She raced in the Ingerden Ski Marathon team last year. A good signing for Team Xperia, but it just makes them so dominant in the women's race. And you see Daniel Rickardson to the left, and then you have Rickard Andreasson to the right. And the youngster in the pink bib. Oh, leading the way there, yeah, from uh, team, team Extra. Extra personnel. Yeah. And now you see you have Daniel Tanel uh, gap back to Jerry Orlin. Let's go really hard. They're picking up some serious pace now. It's interesting that uh, Tunal is uh, in the front for so long. You have uh, breaking up the group pretty much uh, in the last uh, couple of Ks. And still continue going pretty hard. You see people have problem to catch up with him. Oh. Oh, missing out on the drink on that occasion. <laughs> so giving drinks to Yuan Shilstar, the very good sprint skier. We've seen a few collisions <laughs> throughout the year so far. <laughs> it's always uh, it's very entertaining to watch anyway. Yep. Now we're heading uh, to Riesberg and we have a, actually a, a sprint there as well. Not for Ski Classic, but uh, for Vasalopet. And it's uh, again 500 euro, and it's just prize money for the winner. And the winner is for the first man to reach Riesberg. Well, yet another historic town on the road here of Asalopit. First occupants in the city of Riesberg back in the 1600s. So certainly, a very historical setting. This course. A bit interesting here again. You see, Daniel Tunnel is not perfect lighting. Well, then you see the website www.skiclassics.com. You can get all the latest, latest statistics. Of course, the live streaming as well. And as mentioned earlier, if you're on Facebook, more than welcome to log on, ask some questions, tell us what you think of the race so far. You can see the next station that they'll cross through. Pretty much seen 
spectators along the route throughout the whole course. See if Breshak in the top again. <laughs> uh, it's a United Bakery guy here. In black and yellow. It's about four of their skiers near the front. Hendriksen it is. Takes it out over his teammate Lagerlin. And Arnie Post as well. One, two, three for Team United Bakeries. Jimmy Onsen there. The two Auckland brothers side by side. Allison in 18th, he's the man wearing the pink bib, current leader for the youth. Bought an ace in 23rd from a, a new team this year, Team N Pro from Norway. Laugalan was uh, 12th place in Vasalopet last year. He's been uh, Mr. Consistency for me for Team United Bakeries this year. They've had some up and down results, uh, but for him, he, he's been very consistent. Eighth in his first race, followed up by another eighth place in Marcia Longa, 13th. The Kona Lube Lauf, just 9.1 seconds behind, and a, a 12th place showing 20 seconds from the winner at the Tatu Marathon. Currently, eighth place in Ski Classics, the 30 year old, and well, this is his 11th Vasalopit. Been here every year since 2002, and his best place has been a, a 12th place showing 12 months ago. So he'll be looking for a personal best, no doubt, here this year. Well, he also had some good results uh, a couple of years ago in EJ Sariskan and the uh, Koenig Ludwig Lauf, a fifth and uh, eighth place. So he's been top 10 for a couple of times in the long distance races. But he's, uh, like you talked earlier, he's one of those in the same mould, maybe, as Yumi Janssen. Just yep. needs that first to push on to that next level. To I think it's uh, important, as, you, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, to have a victory first. To realise it's, it's not impossible to, yep. uh, to be in the top. But it must be a mental hurdle, surely, for these uh, for these younger competitors when they're racing each race against the Alpine brothers, against Stanislav Brescia, guys who have won on a regular basis for, for many years. So it must be quite a mental hurdle to get over the fact that you can beat them and you can, uh, you know, take the podium place. For sure, but it's uh, not impossible. So it, it, just if they realise it, it's, this is possible, then... Uh, they may be gonna be victorious because uh, I think they have the physical uh, capacity. Sure. It's just the uh, mental uh, barriers they have to to break. When you went into your first first Barcelona in two thousand and three, did you did you think about these big guys that were in the race at all? Did you did you actually, question if you could uh, be at the same level as them? Actually, I didn't have so much respect at all. Uh, I just. Uh, keep going but uh, you get experience and uh, know uh, where to uh, do the breakouts and when to drop off and be a little bit relaxed and so on so you get more and more experience uh, the more races you go sure but like uh, in 2005 leading up to that but did you have did you have a result that really made you believe or because I mean you look at the two years prior to that I mean, the 24th place and a 16th place the year before, 2004. Uh, it's a big jump up to second place. It's yeah, a huge jump. Uh, and my goal was not the Vasarop, but it was the normal distance races. So yeah. Vasarop was, was yeah, it's the funny thing to do. Yeah. So that was uh, more of a surprise to be uh, second place. So my goal, uh, realistic goal, was just to be uh, between 5 and 15. Okay. But so there the, wasn't something prior that year where you thought, okay, I can give this a good crack, you know, I'm in good form. I'm, uh... No, so uh, it's just the, the last two years that I uh, was a, a pro that I was uh, heading for uh, the long distance races. So. Okay. So here we see at the 34.5 kilometer mark, Hendriksen, three Norwegians leading in fact, and three from Team United Bakeries. Still a fairly solid pack. Two skiers there from the new team, Team N Pro. German skier in there as well. 
So Mas frying out and then we had the Russian guy Shiryayev. So it was about 37 seconds from the leader to the end of that uh, chasing pack. Beautiful pictures once again. Helicopter overhead. We've been going now for well over one and a half hours, 54 kilometers to go. Because we're based here in Mora at the finishing line and it's pretty quiet here at the moment. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, <laughs> not too long I'm sure the, this place will be absolutely jam-packed. It's maybe too many people in the crowd so far. It's a wonderful setup. There is a, there's a massive big screen here where uh, the locals can come down and watch the race as well. So in maybe, let's see, 2 hours 20, it's going to be crowded here. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll tell you what, you probably want to be here in about an hour and a half if you want to get a good seat. And a bit of a, a bit of a change to the finishing line this year, isn't there? Yep, yeah, they have put in a small hill uh, the last 100 meters. Yeah, I think it's both to... Uh, Wow, one to, to get the, uh, the amount of people across the track. It was a bit of a nightmare the years before. So yeah. they've put a, a tunnel underneath, which is uh, really good. And also an extra excitement uh, for the race uh, to have this, because it's, the, it's very flat, the last part. So Just wanted to throw something in there. Yeah, <laughs> so do something different. Yeah. Still waiting to see what the times for the woman were through the display. It'll be still interesting to see if Jenny Hansen is holding on to her lead, if she's been able to to extend it, extend the time, of course, back to that second place. It's a little bit interesting as well to to know that. No one have uh, one boss of it uh, without kick wax. So just double pull and uh, just use the glide of the ski so as no one uh, been victorious. People have tried, been in uh, third place as the best. Mm -hmm. Was but it Jerry Aline that, yeah. that did it, the double bowl? 2000, uh, 2008. That's incredible. The double pole that distance 90 kilometers. Well, I got given a, a, an interesting fact sheet, I'll tell you what, about this race, and it's uh, some incredible uh, facts, I must say. I'll tell you a couple now. Of the, well, we're over half a million competitors who have raced in this race, and, well, each of them that have got to the finish line have together covered the distance equal to 1,050 times around the Earth, or 54 return journeys to the moon. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite some distance. And I think they lose some weight as well. Yeah. Uh, each skier loses on average three kilograms. Uh, three, yeah, kilo yeah, three kilograms during a race. That is to say, over the history of this event, some 17,600 Varsalopit skiers have disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> So that means for yourself, well, you've done it seven times, 21 kilos you've lost if wow. you go on that average. It's not bad. <laughs> yeah, it's some uh, carbohydrates and calories that burns. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, a couple of years ago, it uh, was uh, more people doing this carbo, uh, carbo load strategy. Yeah. So they uh, went without, uh, like, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, non-carbohydrate uh, uh, meal at all. And they emptied the body on carbohydrates. Uh, 
get really tired and then uh, start eating carbohydrates uh, and eat, eating it a lot uh, from uh, yeah, middle uh, of uh, Wednesday uh, Wednesday night and eat a lot and then uh, you can load a little bit more in the body and it's so useful uh, in the end uh, to have a good carbohydrate yeah. load because yeah. uh, if you go uh, above your threshold the it's a the threshold is uh, where you produce uh, lactate, uh, lactate as much, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. as much uh, much as you can uh, handle. Okay, uh, not handle it, where you can body can uh, recover easily. So go you, you go harder than this one, the the lactate gonna increase all the time, yeah. and then you have to slow the speed. And then when you pass this uh, threshold, you just burn uh, carbohydrates. And then it will uh, last for maybe one hour, one and a half. Okay. And the time here is uh, the winning time is uh, we talked about before three and uh, three hours fifty. Yeah. So you have to add uh, extra energy during the race. You have to train so much that you can do some fat burn during the race. Yeah. So if you can move this threshold uh, closer to your maximum heart rate. It's uh, then uh, much easier to uh, to burn fat. Okay. Oh, very interesting. So if you go, uh, maybe not on this stage, but it's uh, uh, the first 20k when it's not very fast, then it's uh, very good if you can go on maybe 30% fat or something, and then the rest uh, carbohydrates. Then you save the carbohydrates for the for the last bit to push at the end. Yeah. That's interesting. Do these big teams have like a, a nutritionist with them, or no, not uh, with them all the time, but they uh, have a dialogue with uh, with them uh, during the re during the year. Yeah. So how to do and uh, what to think about and so on. Yeah. And the uh, service uh, people uh, they have uh, on the team is uh, there are a lot of people. Yeah. So like Daniel Tenay, I think he's uh, have thirty people. And I, when I raced, I had uh, uh, around 14 just uh, serving me with wow. dr drinks and uh, food and so on. So is that friends and family or is that... Uh, <laughs> friends and family and uh, so on. Yeah. That's such a big crew. I mean, the Tynell brothers, what, there's just two of them for the team and uh, yeah. to have that many. Ooh. You certainly need a committed crew behind you. <laughs> so there's a woman and, well, she's closed the gap. Just 3.5 seconds now, and now there's a big gap back to Serena Bona and, well... Laila Kveli. Laila Kveli, but where is Susan Istrup? That was interesting. Very interesting. Maybe, well, to be that far behind, it could be that she is not in the race. We might have to find that one out quick smart. That will be very disappointing for Susan Nistrom. I saw an interview with her yesterday. She was rearing to go so unless something's changed overnight of course she was going for her fourth uh, straight victory in ski classics she of course won the the fifth her fifth i should say shea varson the women's race last week and of course is a, a former champion here as well 2010 so that'll be very disappointing for the 29-year-old. As mentioned, we'll quickly get some information and see what is the story there with uh, Susan Nistrom. So back at the front for the men. 50 kilometers to go, so we've done about 40 kilometers now. So it looks like a skier there from Team N Pro. In the front, Saventura Sinas in the lead. It's also uh, like we discussed uh, before with the uh, United Bakeries guy Laugalan and Hendrickson, a skier that has been uh, in the long distance races for a while, but not uh, at podium, but good uh, p uh, position. Yeah, well, he, he's in his seventh Barcelona Lockbit, and it's been a long time since he's had a good showing. His best showing, in fact, was his first ever in 2006 where he finished in 16th place but uh, well 12 months ago he had a very disappointing 61st placing 2010 he was 25th 
Well, this year he's, uh, it's been. Well, he had a good start to Ski Classics in the Czech Republic, finishing in seventh place. Two hours, 22 minutes, 36 seconds. 47 seconds behind Rajak. But since then, he had a 39th place in Marcia Longa. Very disappointing. 22nd placing at the Conny Ludwig Lauf and a 17th placing at the Tartu Marathon. He's currently 17th in uh, Ski Classics. So he's our leader at the moment. Uh, Auckland in second position. Jorgen Auckland, of course, the younger of the Auckland brothers. So what's the winter been like at this part of the world? Is it, has it been a good winter? It was a late winter, wasn't it? It's been a late winter in Sweden. Late uh, winter and uh, also not so much snow as uh, usual. Yeah. But uh, at this part of the, of the country, on, uh, it's been uh, okay. Yeah, I was up, uh, well, not the Christmas, just now, the Christmas before, I was up the northern part of Sweden. It was about minus 35. I was up there at the same time this year. Well, the Christmas just gone, it was only minus 10. Yeah. So it was a, a huge difference, really. But the northern part of Sweden has uh, a lot uh, more s uh, snow than uh, this uh, middle, uh, little bit uh, north of middle part of Sweden, like Dalarna. Yeah. It's not uh, super far from uh, uh, Stockholm, Dalarna. It starts from uh, 150k up to, uh, if you reach Salen, uh, the more far side of Dalarna, mm. then it's uh, like it. 300 350k from Stockholm, and it's a it's a very popular ski resort as well, isn't it, Salen? Salen, yeah, yeah. They have a good uh, uh, alpine skiing, not yeah. uh, very uh, long uh, alpine slopes, but uh, there are a lot of them. So it's the second biggest in Sweden. You know, here it's a great party there in winter too. Yeah, for the, yeah. Uh, for the youngsters that go from Stockholm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so many people they go up to Sicilian and put some uh, uh, ski clothes, but they haven't skied <laughs> with them, <laughs> so they just uh, go on after ski. <laughs> but this. Uh, time of year it's a uh, very lovely we uh, go out skiing and uh, when it's conditioned like that uh, like it is uh, right now clear blue sky uh, cold morning uh, but uh, the warm and the sun uh, is uh, warming yeah so yeah, it's it's a lovely time yeah they, they, these guys must be rather hot in this kind of conditions with the suit on wouldn't they Nah, it's a very thin uh, race suit, yeah. so they have a, a what do you say? So it breathes quite nicely, I suppose, with the yeah, with the shirt underneath. Ah, oh, thermal and top underneath. Yeah. Thermal top, and then uh, they have a this race a thin race suit that's uh, breathable with the fab fabrics that's breathable. Yeah. Compared to the old times in 1922, they would have the uh, cotton or wool. <laughs> it was so and about 20 layers as well. Yeah, <laughs> wet and uh, cold. So uh, times change. Then we have Anders Högberg uh, at the left uh, track. Very um, impressive-looking suit he's got on. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it was a little bit ugly, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it's a debatable topic, I suppose. Yeah, now they're coming uh, pretty close to the road here. So people can pass on the road and have a look at the skiers. And there you, you see the road to the left. Yeah, it's just one way, isn't it? So it's not the nicest if you're looking to travel. No. Which I don't think there'll be too many people travelling, to be honest, although there is quite a few cars there. So 48k to go. You see the signs on the sides there, so every k they counting down from 90. 
how much uh, kind of looking at your competitors and uh, just look, trying to read their body language, trying to read, okay, is he tired, is he, is he looking strong, is he the one who's going to, is there a lot of that going on? Or? Uh, it's no idea to do that, I think, then you uh, are you're worrying a, about other people instead of yourself. Then you are not, maybe not a loser, but uh, uh, you have to think about yourself, uh, what to do and so on, but you have to look at the competitors more likely how good life do they have. Uh, what are my chance to, chances to go away in a uh, different part of the track and so on. Mm. So if you look at them and uh, if you come like me in 2005 and not any good results in Vassal before and uh, have a look at uh, like Tinell, Oscar Schwer or Jerry Arlin or some, someone and uh, just think, oh my god, these gear are really, really good. And then you just put yourself out of the race really, yeah. don't you? Then you feel really tired. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so you can't think about uh, how tired you are or how much it hurt in your, especially in the arms in the, in the end. Yeah. Anders Högberg here to the left was actually fifth place in the, the first uh, sprint uh, championship in, in Lachtis. It was a uh, on the scene and on the, the world champs. Okay. So it's an old uh, sprint guy, born in 1976. See so the pack very tight together now. So and when it's wide like this, it's uh, o uh, often a sign that it's uh, not uh, going w very fast. Yep. It'll be interesting, we can look at the times at the next uh, station and we can compare it to to the record time. Yep. Well, if we look at so when they went for Rizbe after 34.5 kilometers, our leader at the time was Hendrickson at one hour, 25 minutes, 58.3 seconds. So they are like uh, just two minutes behind the record time and just two minutes uh, before last year's time, so, so it's not bad. Not bad. So they have a good speed, and last year they have a end time on 3.51. And the record time is 3 hours, 38 minutes and 58 seconds. So if you were a, a betting man, what time would you put it on? If you got a, ten, a two minute buffer. Two minute buffer. I will say 3.49 to 3.51. Interesting. And you? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll think positive. I'll go a little bit before that, I think. I'll go, I'll take 3, 3.47 to 3.49. I'll take the two minutes before yours. Yep. <laughs> But if I win that, you must be very disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the news as well, coming into this race, of course, a little bit of uh, English royalty. We talked about the British flag with the British skier up there earlier. Of course, we got uh, Pippa and James Middleton, the sister of the, the new Duchess of Cambridge, of course, Catherine Middleton taking part in the Vasa Loppet. Here this year, they're doing it to raise money for a charity known as Magic Breakfast, which is a small registered charity that fights child hunger in the UK, delivering free breakfasts such as bagels and cereal, etc., etc., to thousands of state primary schools there in the UK. So they are doing it for charity. And well, I'm not too sure if we'll get a picture of them, but uh, I'm sure they'll be well back in the field. But it's great to have them, and there's been quite a bit of. Uh, well, royalty, you could say, that have taken part in the Vassalopet over the years. Of course, the current king, uh, King Carl Gustav, he has uh, participated in the Vassalopet three times, in fact, every 10 years from 1977. While his son, Prince Carl Philip, took part in 2004, and he did a time of 6 hours, 21 minutes, 52 seconds. 
Well, the daughter, Princess Madeline, she took part in the Shavasan, which is the race for the girls, which was last week in 2008. So a little bit of a royal participation even in the Vassalopet. And we see the chasing group. So uh, Anders Palmier, who took the sprint uh, in Monks Budan, is now uh, actually a little bit far back there. Oh, Yemi Jonsson there almost having a collision with the skier coming across onto his track. And the three skiers from Team United Banker is looking to well, push ahead here. They're the three leaders at the moment. Well, where can you see this ski classics heading in the future? Can you see it going from strength to strength each and every year and increased number of teams, increased number of sponsorship? Yeah, I think so. Uh, to be so big in uh, just two years, uh, I think it's, uh, it's cool to see. Hmm. Uh, I love the, the ski sport and the cross-country skiing, so uh, I think it's good for the, for the sport that uh, everyone has the possibility to see them uh, uh, a couple of, uh, seven times during the winter to, on, the, on the TV. Yeah. It's a fantastic idea. I think it's a great packaged kind of deal and it kind of adds a little bit of extra excitement, you could say, to it, of course, with the team challenge, the sprint challenge. Um, the overall winner, the yellow bib, of course. Uh, it's exciting to watch, and you can follow them throughout the year, and, and it's about consistency as well. Yeah, for sure. And uh, if they have uh, seen the skier a couple of times uh, during the winter, it's easier to recognize them and so on. And it must be great for these young guys as well. I mean, they get a lot more exposure than what they would if uh, they were racing as an individual and they finished in seventh place. You, you don't really hear too much about them after but if they're in a team like uh, Team United Bakeries, Team Extra Personnel then you, you start to see them a little bit more. Uh, and uh, it can be interesting in the future because uh, we were mentioning before about the cycling and so on, the team, uh, team go and uh, one person can have one uh, uh, yeah, to catch up the, the pack. Yeah. So I think we're going to see that in the future as well in, in, uh, in the cross-country skiing and the long distance here. Uh, start with uh, broadcasting, start with teams, uh, start with helping uh, each other a little bit. Mm -hmm. And to go more to you go for this guy or this guy or this guy. Mm -hmm. And the other people help helping them to, to win. So maybe if you are a pack like this, uh, three guys uh, try to do a, a breakout. The other uh, group is maybe uh, try to hold the pace back. So if some some other teams want to go and catch them, the the three guys or four guys uh, from the from the same team that is in the lead, just uh, following. And when they reach the the changing uh, the the leading pack, they can go again. Yeah. So they kill each other, and then it's more exciting for the viewers as well. As well. Definitely, definitely. And uh, I mean, what kind of time frame could you could you see that kind of? We're not there thing? yet. I think it's uh, a couple of years uh, more to go. Of course. I mean, you've got a lot of old guys, you could say, and as they say, you can't teach old dogs new tricks. And uh, <laughs> it could be a case of these younger guys that uh, will bring that sort of through in the, in the next couple of years. I will say. Uh, Four or five years, maybe. Yeah. Then we see much more. Uh, not uh, as the managers say how to do, but uh, they help each other more. Uh, as we see the in the Olympics uh, at the skiathlon, the Swedish team uh, did a uh, a team thing. Yeah. They Johan Olsson went away. Anders Södergren, uh, Marcus Helner was uh, uh, just taking it easy in the pack and. Uh, try to just uh, slow it down mm. so I think it I think that's cool yeah definitely uh, and it's great to watch I mean uh, it is a long race I mean this race of course 90 kilometers will be on air for about four and a half hours yeah. so it is a lo long time and uh, all these extra little 
things that get added in it just makes it more exciting to watch and a bit of viewing and of course not to, to mention sponsorship it's a lot more attractive for sponsors to jump on board in a team environment than it is say for for an individual for sure I mean the uh, the coverage that the sponsor would get is far more greater especially when you're getting seven events throughout the year for ski classics and uh, say seven eight competitors in the race I mean it's it's fantastic for the sponsor yeah that's good now we're going to see uh, see them up in Eversberg here in a couple of minutes here you see this is of course our second and final sprint for the ski classics All the locals hovering around waiting for the participants to arrive and then you see them still a strong pack here we have also uh, double up uh, with the uh, sprint money from Vasa Lopet not the ski classic they uh, have a little bit more than a thousand euro no. so now we're gonna see if Stanislav Riesak is gonna go for it again he's hungry for his sprint <laughs> points <laughs> But these uh, these leading guys would they would they make a comfortable living? Uh, these professional guys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a good life, but, but uh, not as much as uh, in ice hockey or uh, in uh, NBA and uh, NFL. Yeah. Uh, of course. And these bigger or football. Yeah. They get millions and millions. Yeah. So that it's they can survive and uh, buy. Not what they want, but uh, pretty okay. Yeah, I suppose they spend a large majority of their time too training, yeah. so I <laughs> don't think you need too much money. So coming into that sprint, have its bay. Well, it's shadow drumming to the right, I think. So 43 kilometers. Here we have Kalle Grafnings from Fallen Bolange. 87 in the orange gray suit. Just holding on to the pack there. Now we're going to see the sprint then. No picture. There. Oh, Rajak, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Not <Mr>. surprising. <laughs> and he's going to take it. Stanislav Rajak. I've lost count of the amount of times he's won a sprint in Ski Classics this year. But he's extended his lead once again. Damen in second. Hendrickson in third. So 18, is it? 18, 19 skiers. Oh, I think still it's going. a little bit, little bit more. I think it's around 35 or something. Yeah. So are we going to see Stanislav Vranjek drop back once again and just yeah. get back in the pack? No, I think so. We've already seen him drop off. 40 skiers. Hokan Levström at the 39th place there was a skier for Fallen Bolange before, but now he is uh, going for a different club. I think it was from his, uh, where he was born and okay. raised. Well, leading the way after that second sprint. Is uh, Damen, 28-year-old from Norway. And up there now is Hendriksen. It looks like in the number 14. He's telling the uh, snowmobile to get out of the way. Been a good race so far from uh, Thomas Hendriksen. 33-year-olds look solid so far. So now again, uh, uh, you have uh, easy skiing for 4, 4K, and here is uh, very fast downhills. If you put yourself in their in their boots, you could say at the moment, would you be content to just stick with this pack? Which, uh, could you imagine? someone trying to break away sometime soon or these two here are starting to, to build a little bit of a lead but 
I don't think this is a, a winning uh, go at all. Yeah. So uh, if, I, if I were in the pack, I should be uh, continue to stay there. Yeah. Pretty uh, relaxed. At what point would you think it would be the last point to to get a breakaway, a winning breakaway? You could say, if the, this pack stays together. The last part. Yeah, where, where would you you see the break coming if we stayed this strong? I mean, I just think back to the kind of Ludwig Lauf, I know it was a shorter distance, but it just never broke up. The pack just stayed together and stayed together, and no one made the break, and it, it just was a fight to the finish line. It just came down to the last 100 meters, pretty much. Yeah. I think there can often happen a couple of K or 1K from Hökberg. Yeah. So it's like 20K to go. Yeah. People start to be tired, and uh, just before you enter the, the flat part, the uh, uh, last 19k. So, yeah. Daniel Tonelli is uh, normally do his uh, breakout in 1k from uh, Hökberg. You see here, what's going on here? Just holding on to his pole, a little bit of uh, they help friendship. each other a little bit. <laughs> So, uh, is this to hold on to their lead, or is it? To, of no, course, they they're in different teams. I mean, they're, they're not to push him a little bit further on, because it's uh, much easier to be in in the back of his. Uh, ah, so he's just giving them the little push. To yeah. They're getting faster if okay. they're helping each other. Then. Interesting. So it's uh, similar to bicycling, but uh, there you don't have the possibility to, <laughs> to, <laughs> yeah, to push the, the guy <laughs> in front of you. Yeah. got a question here on Facebook uh, if running is in the leading group at, uh, at the end if he uh, has a good chance uh, in the finish sprint so yeah uh, this is coming from Martin Edemeyer on the Facebook on the live uh, center so what are your thoughts on that one I think he has a good chance he has uh, done very well in the the world championship in sprint yeah, it was uh, I think it was second or third place in the 15k classic in uh, Oslo. So yeah. he's a good sprinter, but uh, I would say it's uh, pretty much a difference to be uh, uh, going 1500 meters as it is in the normal sprint mm. and doing a sprint uh, after 89k. <laughs> so it's pretty tough. It's more. Uh, about uh, how uh, much energy uh, you have in the in the end, uh, compared to how fast you are in normally 200 meters. Mm. So oh. I would say he's oh. some of the some of the nature, some of the the local creatures of the land. As we just look at the official results there after 41 point or 47.1 kilometers, I should say, the second sprint. Rajak, of course, Damin in second taking the 15 points as we look lower down Jimmy Jonsson in 13 Jürgen Brink the two-time defending champion there or thereabouts and well all the top guys pretty much there the Estonian a couple of Estonians up there as well then we have a gap there after uh, Håkan Levström. you see the big creatures Big creatures of the land. That's oh, wonderful, isn't it? King of Sweden, <laughs> say, in the nature. There you see it, 150 points now for the Czech skier. What a fantastic year it is turning out to be for Stanislav Rajak. Well, thank you for your question there, Martin. Of course, everyone else who is on the live center, please do log on to Facebook, tell us what you think, ask some questions. We'll be happy to answer your questions or at least try to answer them anyway. I will just finish the question there uh, about running and his uh, opportunities to, to have a, a winning sprint in the end. 
I would say uh, I don't think he's gonna win because uh, he have uh, I is uh, too tired probably because it's uh, he's not experienced enough to uh, to go 90k. It is a different ball game, isn't it? Yeah, I yeah. mean, after 89 kilometers, it's uh, it's not as though you're you're fresh and it's just down to pace. So you see, uh, Tinal, but, is it take the lead once again? Yeah, in the, the bigger downhills here. So now there is soon uh, maybe a couple of uh, maybe a 1k. They're gonna cross the road for the first time and the last time. First and the last, and well. You can see clear blue skies over here that doesn't get any more perfect than this. Certainly the, the weather gods have been very kind to us here today. Oh, yeah. 88th edition of Marcel Oppet. You see him uh, catching out the scooter. <laughs> <laughs> so here you have uh, also opportunity to choose track if you want to go behind the scooter or you want to go in their uh, uh, own uh, track. So uh, with it, uh, there we see the road to the left again. She's not soon going to pass that. Uh, so here you see the scooter uh, just blowing some snow into the track. Okay. So that normally that's uh, slower, but you get some wind from the scooter, and sometimes it's good to have some uh, icy, crushed snow in the track. Yeah. You see they get a little bit of a gap there. I mentioned before, maybe Tinal didn't have so good good skis, but he had had the own track yeah, done. Uh, so it can be a difference between tracks to track. When they groom the track, uh, and if it was a little bit icy, if it's wet underneath, so one track can be faster in one, uh, one part and another in a different place. So. Yeah. We've got another question here from Yaroslav, and it looks like he is a Stanislav Rajak fan, maybe from the Czech Republic, who knows? Wants to know what your best is, Martin. I'm assuming he means here in Vasilopit, maybe? And well, do you want me to answer that? No. <laughs> second place and first loser, 2005. But what a great finish it was. I mean, one second to Oscar Svart, that is absolutely tremendous. And uh, a time of 3 hours, 51 minutes, 48 seconds. And uh, well, the last time you competed, of course, last year, you were here. You were racing at this point in time. Yeah. And you crossed in 19th place. Yeah. So that was not a good result. I think that was the uh, worst race during the season. So I was a little bit better uh, uh, in my... Uh, Marcia Long and Kenning Ludwig Lauf in these races. Yeah. And well, if you're meaning outside of Varsalopit, well, of course, bronze medalist, world championships. Yeah. Fantastic. With uh, the Swedish team, of course. And the ten, oh, 4 by 10 kilometer, of course. Yeah. So that was the first leg, the classic one. So yeah. I'm a little bit, I was a little bit more of a classic uh, specialist. Uh, yeah. So compared to skating. And of course, you've you've been on the tracks here this week as well. You yeah, that's how in the the relay. Yeah, yeah. How Actually, did that go? I was uh, <laughs> a nice go. I was uh, I'm not training so much now, so maybe one just once a week. So yeah. that's a, a lot uh, different uh, compared to ten to fourteen times a week. Of course. <laughs> so I'm not uh, uh, trained to do this kind of sport, <laughs> but uh, uh, you have the. A little bit of strength left, and you have some, uh, especially the technique still there. Yeah. So when it was uh, on uh, Friday, it was a very fast race. So yeah. I was uh, uh, third place on the first first leg then in the relay. So. And what was the distance for that? Uh, it was the uh, from start to Monks Budana, so it okay. was 24k. Okay. So this is our leading woman now. Vibeke Skofterud looks like she is leading. She's taken over from Jenny Hansen. Well, she's uh, well. She took it, took the lead in the first uh, time station, of course, and then she dropped back by about 40 seconds, and now she's back in the lead. So, where do we have Jenny Hansen? Here we have a white race suit in the middle of the group.
So there we see our leading woman. see some of the, the drink stations there and apparently from what I've been told some 92,220 litres of Ekstrom's blueberry soup, sports drinks and coffee is uh, consumed at the seven checkpoints along the course in Vasalopet which is uh, quite a lot as well as that is 75,000 Vasalopet buns and what are <laughs> Vasalopet buns? <laughs> I don't know <laughs> Can we see Jenny Hanson? And it's up to 50, uh, 48 seconds. So it's been a big turnaround from the yep. last uh, time check. Here we see Matthias Arsford helping uh, Vibeck Skoftenbrud in the Mora race suit. Of course, the so women have only been uh, competing in the Vasalopet since uh, 1981. Yeah, and they have their own uh, class uh, uh, from 1997. Okay. So uh, that's a big difference between uh, men and uh, women. The men's race, you are in the you are in the front if you are leading. Yeah. But the girls' race, the you can have um, much more help from, from other people, from other men. So you maybe are uh, placed 200 in the race, but you're still leading the, the girls' race. So uh, it's fast from the beginning for the girls, and the men is more tactics. Yeah. So it's a completely different race. Uh, definitely. I mean, the, the leading woman, she, she can go out by herself early, can't she? And yeah, she yeah. can continue to build it, she can continue to, to go ahead, whereas a, a single male going ahead, it's... He's going to kill himself. He's yeah, going to kill yeah. himself, yeah. exactly. So we've got another question for you now. As we see, oh, we'll just wait on that one. Serena Bona there as well, and uh, she's quite far behind. Two minutes at 34. Together Valley with right with her and Svensson as well. Laila Kveli is the, was the yellow bib as well with Svensson. Or Laila like Kveli. Kveli is uh, having a, a baby together with uh, Jerry Arlin. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So they are a couple. They are a couple. Didn't know that. That is news to me. 24 years of age, wearing poop number 505. She's first in the youth section. And this is her third Vasalopet. She was a uh, fifth place last year, her first place. 2008, she finished in ninth. So it's been an okay year for Valley. She's had pretty solid results. Sixth, a fourth, a sixth, and a seventh in the four ski classics. So. Yeah, that's good. And what do you think their kid will do? Do you think they'll do skiing, maybe? <laughs> 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 they have the genes. <laughs> they go, definitely, go. <laughs> definitely have the genes. So we've got another question for you from uh, Thomas Donal. What do you think about uh, most of the ski classic races being pure double polling contests? Do you think that uh, new races with more steep uphill sections would be added to the series? I think it's good for the sport that it's a different type of uh, tracks and it's not good at uh, I think for the for the sport, if it's just double pulling all the time, so yeah. I, I I maybe agree with him there. I uh, maybe we're gonna see uh, more added steep uphills, uh, not maybe natural, but they uh, dig up uh, yeah, every maybe five k or something yeah. to just. Uh, Trying to add something more to it. Yeah, to try it's and a, when it's very <coughs> steep, it's very hard to double pull. Yeah. Then you have a big advantage to go diagonal and use the leg. But if it's a flat uphill, then it's a, it may be faster to go double pulling, but then you kill the arms in the long term. Yeah. 
but if it's really steep, then you're not faster in double pulling than you're faster in diagonal. Yeah. I mean, we've only really seen one steep climb so far this year, which, but uh, it's not cascada, which is different, isn't it? It has to be steeper to uh, be very hard to double pull. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, uh, for example, Tartu Marathon in, in Estonia, there, uh, the course is uh, not any big uh, uphills, but it's uh, the uphill there is, there are very uh, small and steep. Yeah. So it's very hard track to just double pull. Yeah. It's a good question there, and a good, yeah. good thought. That's a good analyze from him. So now it's uh, pretty slow in the group again. So 34 kilometers to go, 2 hours, 17 minutes. These guys have been going here. Marcel Lopez, 2012. A couple of boys from Team Extra Personnel. Out the front there, Jürgen Alklind, our current second place skier in ski classics for the season. Leading from the front. Soon they're gonna hit uh, the hill and uh, the uphill uh, just before Uxberg. So there you also have a, a point or place where uh, people uh, go uh, try to do a breakout. So as we see in uh, after Tenang, where uh, the top athletes uh, come up to the top, uh, they normally want to be in the top pair as well. So if you are like in this pack, you are around 30. The five guys uh, go away in the top pair. It's very hard to catch them again. Then you have maybe have to do the work by yourself. Yeah. So there we just see confirmation from the woman, and Susan Nystrom is in the pack. Must have been a very, something must have happened at the start. Broken pole maybe, or something to put her that far behind, surely. I don't think she is satisfied with the seventh place and five minutes behind. That's a long way to catch up, a yeah. very long. I think we have the victory uh, gonna be uh, between uh, Vibeke Skofterud and Jenny Hansson, for sure. So about 48 seconds she leads at the moment. But it's still pretty much to go. Ah, oh, definitely. And when you pass two hours, uh, people uh, normally start to be tired. We discussed before a little bit all, all about carbohydrates. And uh, when you start to be a little bit empty in your body, uh, the times can fly if you uh, drop off. Just looking down uh, those split times for the males at the uh, 47.1 kilometer mark and well there doesn't seem to be any big names outside that uh, leading pack so no real surprises there for the males although saying that Anton Schoham isn't quite having the best of races, the youngster from uh, Team Xperit currently in 81st position. Oh, yeah. So uh, a long way to go if he's to, to improve or even uh, uh, do as well as he did last year, a sixth place getting, of course, in 2011. Yeah, it's not any good year this year, uh, Anton. Uh, much better last year, it was a really success. And uh, this year, uh, Jim Johnson has uh, went from a, a, not a mediocre skier, but a more average top athlete 
to be uh, absolutely in the top and now it's uh, third place overall in ski classic so i think it's enormous and very fun to see so right. I, i'm glad for his uh, his part oh definitely i mean he had to kind of uh step up you could say with uh with uh oscar svart not being here for yeah team experience so uh they're also sad uh, not to see Oscar. Oscar is also adding some extra uh, expectations uh, uh, among the other athletes uh, uh, and the, the crowd. So, yeah. Of course, uh, uh, Yimmy is, he's had some fantastic results. I mean, he's had he's been on the podium um, on two occasions. Of course, second place at Jezuska Panasanska and third place at uh, the Tattoo Marathon, but it, it's not the, quite the same feel if you had Oscar Svart there. And then it's like four teams battling it out. In here. So there we see our leading woman continuing to work with uh, the male competitors further down in the pack. Jakob Ole Ness with the start number 181, Norwegian guy. I think uh, Vibeke Skotteru has pretty good uh, double pull technique. She's a definite uh, skier that uh, can win this, this race. Of course. Uh, Even if it's first time. It's the first time, yeah. yeah. I mean, we've seen her in uh, ski classics. Now they have entered the uphill in uh, just before uh, Uxberg. See if it's, if it's going to be any breakout here. If you were to put money on someone breaking out, who would you think it would be? Would it be one of the the, the lesser known, lesser favourites, you could say? Or could you expect one of the big boys to... I think it's going to be one of the big boys. So you see the Auckland, and then you see the Jerry Alin, Daniel Tunnel. So, <laughs> it's just the top athletes. <laughs> so both uh, Jürgen Auckland and uh, Daniel Tunnel has be, been in the front position a little bit more than expected I think my experience here is uh, when you're passing uh, Uxberg it's uh, 30k left so then you start to be really tired and uh, it's a little bit a kind of new race the last uh, last part so you can be really feeling really well here and uh, yeah for like 10 15k more and then you just hit the wall hit a brick wall and it's yeah. all downhill <laughs> <laughs> so i asked you earlier about being at a certain point in a race where you you know because of your experience you've been in the race before and how you're feeling if you're feeling good at this point as you said it's pretty hard to know because you can hit a brick wall within uh, 10 kilometers very quickly but uh, would these guys know that they're, they're looking good at this point or will they still just be focusing on getting through this next to uh, 10 15 kilometers yeah it's uh, it's not uh, easy to know uh, how the, the other athletes feeling but uh, they can f feel as i said before very well for uh, an hour and uh, 15k more but then they hit the wall so yeah, you never know. So don't be careful uh, with the competitors. Think a little bit more by yourself. Yeah. And your own race. Now Jerry is going pretty hard. You see, he's breaking up the the whole pack here. I see in third position there, our two-time defending champion, Jürgen Brink. 37 year old Swede finished in fifth position in ski classics last year currently sitting in sixth place because as mentioned earlier he came here on the back of a 
a victory at the Tattoo Marathon, of course. So, uh, Stanislav Rieschak on the uh, helicopter view there is a really good ski he past the uh, Jürgen Altland. Uh, pretty easy. So that's interesting. Yeah, if exactly. the Rieschak has a really good ski he can save some energy on the flat parts. So now we have a little bit uh, of a small downhill uh, coming a flat part and then we have a uphill again. And then you reach uh, Uxberg. Bay, of course, after 62 kilometers, after well, in this 90 kilometer race, of course. Of course, Jorgen Brink has had a, a lot of good results prior to coming into the, the longer form, you could say. In fact, he's won 11 FIS races between 1995 and 2006 at, at various distances. In fact, won three bronze medals at the 2003 World Championships in uh, Val de Femme. The 10, what, uh, what did he win? Three, three different bronze medals, didn't he? In the, uh, yeah, yeah. In the double pursuit, the 50K and uh, the relay. And uh, the relay was the, the time that he was, uh, yeah, he hit the wall. Okay. So he was leading by uh, 20 seconds uh, the last 2K, but uh, Hit the wall and was uh, nearly uh, losing the, the third place as well. Wow. But it took some revenge on the... He was uh, taking the at the 50k uh, bronze medal again. So that's uh, absolutely amazing, I think. Yeah, definitely. So Jürgen Brink is an amazing skier. And the uh, double up here uh, winner the last two years. So now you see the uphill again here is going pretty fast again. Cool. Well, they're working hard, that's for sure. Now I, I will say the race is going to be more and more interesting. What's happened now is can actually stay like this. Yeah. So at the 47.1 kilometer mark at Ivers Bay, Raja crossed the line in one hour, 58 minutes, 23.8 seconds. And how is that looking? For so that's one minute slower than the record time and just uh, two minutes uh, slower, a little faster than uh, last year. Okay, so we're pretty much on the same pace yeah, from the previous station. But uh, in the end here, uh, it's a big difference between the record time and uh, last year because the uh, record time, the year, the was much colder condition all the way. Okay. So last year it was much warmer in the end. Yeah, it's it's certainly heating up here in Mora at the finishing line, and I'll tell you what, the locals are turning up in in good numbers now. We're yeah. Starting to see quite a few on the finishing line in the stands. So preparation for this race, where, when would these uh, teams have arrived here? Yourself, when you raced, how, how far in advance would you be here preparing, getting yourself ready? I was maybe here on Thursday, Friday, so not uh, so far, uh, many days before. Yeah. Uh, people that have a longer, uh, from the other countries and a longer travel time, they maybe want to be here earlier. Yeah. Especially if you are from the States and so on, or Canada or uh, Japan or something, there is, you have the time zones as well that you have to be, I would say, uh, each hour you're crossing the time zone uh, you have to add an extra day yeah. well, it certainly is shaping up to be a fantastic final here the 2012 Vasselopet now you see the top athletes just the Daniel Tenel, Jerry Alin, Jürgen Brink and then you see the Daniel Rickardson in the blue race suit and then Stanislav Rieschak 
Ne bekle Jürgen eller Eldar Rönning. Kjetil Dammen. Jürgen Aukland. So another sprint Anders. prize here. Yep. So once more 500 euro. Come around the bend. It's fantastic to see so many supporters along the track throughout the entire race. It's 90k long track. <laughs> yeah. So Tenal takes out first place, crossing the line. You see the Two group. Two hours 31. The group is not bigger at all now, so. Yeah, the two Auckland brothers there, no surprise. Andreasen for Team Spirit as well. Jimmy Johnson just then behind him. Bought an ace in 18th place. And you have a gap back to the changing group. Oh, it looks about a, a couple of hundred then. meters. The Russian there in the 30th place. So this part of the track is a uh, little bit up and down all the way to uh, to Hökberg, and uh, the last bit uh, up to Hökberg is uh, slightly uphill. And uh, if I want to bet, I want I'm gonna bet the, that it's gonna be a, a breakout from Tunnel, the last cave uh, from uh, uh, before you enter Hökberg. Okay, you've heard it here first, right? Yep. <laughs> Well, I mentioned it earlier just how this course is shaped up. 25% of the course is uphill, so 22.2 kilometres. 43% of it is considered level, so that's about 38.6 kilometres, and well, about 32%, 29.2 kilometres, considered down, downhill here in this 90 kilometre race. What are your what are your thoughts on the on the schedule so far for ski classics? It's uh, it's a pretty tough schedule. I mean, the toughest, of course, is that uh, one week, pretty much, between the two races. Marcia Longa and uh, the Conny Ludwig Lauf. Yeah, I come to that a little bit later. It's uh, interesting to see how uh, Jerry Arlen uh, going pretty hard. Yeah, so he, uh, he's uh, quitting there. Otherwise, it's a little bit uphill here. You have a good chance to do anything. Yeah, back to your question there. Uh, I think it's a little bit sad that it, they not start a little bit earlier. So it's a start in January, and then it's, like you say, it's uh, like two weeks uh, between the races all the time there. Yeah. So it's not very long time to, uh, to recover. Uh, it's a short period of time, so like for Oscar Schwerd, for an example, yeah. if you have a sickness and it's pretty long, then you are yeah, yeah. out three races, pretty yeah. much, just yeah. like that. Yeah. So that's a little bit sad, and also it's uh, good to have a, a race before uh, Christmas, uh, I would say. Yeah. And I mean, I mean the that one week gap between Marcia Longa and Conny Lovillauf is is crazy <laughs> to do the uh, seventy kilometers. And that last two kilometers straight uphill, and then the next week do a 50 kilometer in, in Germany. I mean, you got the traveling time. You, it's just it's crazy the turnaround for that one. But uh, positive thing is that uh, if you travel down to, uh, for example, Marcia Longa, then you stay da down there in Middle Europe and and also go uh, uh, Koenig. Yeah. So a question there on Facebook uh, about the bib number. So they have the uh, number uh, of the bib uh, from the place last year up to 150. 
and from 150 they, uh, up to 200 they will uh, just give out uh, to people that not been racing the last uh, the last year. So for an example, Jürgen Brink was uh, winning last year, so he has uh, bib number number one, and also for sure uh, uh, his name was uh, name on the bib. It's a little bit harder to see the numbers this year. It's yeah, uh, bigger it's names, of course, as you yeah. said, the names are on it this year. We just look at those standings at the 61.7 kilometer mark. Yeah, so it is great to see on um, the number, you know exactly where they came last year. Yep. It's a nice long straight line here through the trees. It's a fantastic shot overhead. And uh, in the top of the picture you have the uh, alpine uh, slope of the uh, Gopsus. So it's just the uh, top athletes in the in the group now. It looked about 18, 20, 20 skiers in yeah. that, that front pack. So they have uh, coming up some people from the chasing group from Oxbury. It was a little bit splitted there earlier. No real surprises there in that leading group. Now the uphill up to Gopsus will start from here. Well, certainly a, a strong Norwegian influence in that leading pack. <laughs> of course, uh, a bit of rivalry, of course, Norway versus Sweden. In fact, we've only seen 15 foreign winners in the history of Vasalopet. First uh, non-Swede to win, in fact, came in 1954. Uh, Kuvaya from Finland. Of course, the last foreign winner of Vasilopit was that man in the picture just moments ago, Jorgen Auklin, in uh, 2008. Of course, in our last King Classics, we saw a, a Sweden 1 2 3 on the podium and the Tatu yeah. Marathon. I think it's an interesting start here from Daniel Rickardsson. It's a blue grey suit there to the right in the picture. He's yeah, a guy, a uh, uh, World Cup skier that uh, absolutely can be uh, winning the Vasa Loppet. Yeah, we it's haven't really mentioned them too much in this race so far, have we? No. It was certainly a fantastic uh, race. He, of course, was second place in his first ski classics of the year at the Tatu Marathon. Just one second behind Jürgen Brink. And also an uh, Olympic gold uh, medalist in, uh, in relay. Yeah, in the 4x10 kilometre at... Uh, 
the 2010 Olympics in Vancouver. Also won a couple of World Cups. He was also in the Swedish team that uh, won last year's uh, silver medals at the World Champs in Oslo. Yep. This is his third Vasa Loppet for Rikard Sun. His uh, previous two showings were in 2005, 2006. 2006 he finished in 13th place in a time of 4 hours 36 minutes and 40 seconds he's in a new team in the ski classics this year, a team called Team New Sweden she has a, a couple of younger skiers as well in the team Fredrik Bistrom, David Jonsson and Fredrik Usitalo. So three very young skiers there, all in their well, mid to late twenties. Jürgen Auckland is uh, in the lead for uh, pretty much uh, time now. He has, yeah. He's doing a lot of work at the front. 24 kilometers to go. So now you see the Alpine slope to the right here. And when you pass uh, Gopsus, it's a uh, pretty fast downhill. Here they also normally have an unofficial uh, uh, drinking station. Daniel Tinell is uh, from this region, Dalarna. Okay. So he's uh, pretty famous here in uh, also in Mora. So he's uh, living in uh, in Bålänge. But uh, born and raised in Gryxbo, not far from Falun. Of course, he's just one of the six competitors to win the Vasalopet three or more times of course he's picked it up on three occasions it's the record well nine victories from Nils Karlsson Mura Nisse so Mura Nisse a, yeah so that's his nickname nice <laughs> well he won in uh, 1943 and then he went from 1945 to 1951 picking up the title each and every year before returning, picking up his last title in 1953. Of course, uh, Tinell has a chance to, to go one ahead of Oscar Svart here today. If he is to cross the line in first place to pick up his uh, fourth title. I think the scooter is pretty <laughs> a little bit too close to the to the skier, and in that uh, downhill there, I will say they will definitely reach uh, more than 60k. Certainly, is impressive speed. Now the uh, snowmobile just getting too far ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See the relay. <laughs> the pace is phenomenal down that hill. Ooh. Andun Laugaland from Norway, team uh, United Bakeries. 
United Bakeries is a big uh, bakery company that uh, also tried to come into the Swedish market. So then uh, Vasaloppet and the long distance uh, races is a pretty uh, good spot to be viewed. Because they had a, a strong, well for me a stronger lineup last year because they had a strong female in the form of uh, Sandra Hansen as well, of course, yeah. so they were able to pick up the points, but this year, uh, from my knowledge, they don't have any female skiers at all. Now we see a breakout from Jarelin. He's pushing hard. Is he going for it, or? I think so. It's back to our leading woman. We're going to see the time gap between them. Skofterud and Hansson. So she crosses Oxbay in a time of 2 hours 46 minutes 50.7 seconds. So we'll keep an eye on that and see if Jenny Hansson is held on to second place and what the difference is. She's looking strong, the Norwegian scam. Absolutely. I'm going to see if we see Jerry Arlen if he's still in the lead or in the pack again. Oh, he's in third place. She has tried a little bit. He's tried it a couple of times, hasn't he? He's tried yeah. to uh, push a little bit and he's given up pretty quickly. See back there as well with that pink bib, Cullison. He's leading our youth section in ski classics. So in uh, Oxbury it was uh, a gap there in six seconds between uh, Callison and Au uh, Anders Auckland. So there were just 12 uh, skiers in the in the first pack. Uh, Donald Tunnel uh, tried to break out. It's starting to be crowded outside here now. It is. It's very, very <laughs> impressive here in Mora at the finishing line. It's a, it's a beautiful sight. We've got a wonderful view from the commentary box, I'll tell you what. What do you think? 2.48 and it's 21k to go. And what time did we have in Uxbury? 2.31. So that's just one minute uh, slower than the record time. Now we are four minutes faster than last year. Wow. And I mean, one minute off the record time isn't isn't too much. I mean, we still haven't seen a, a pull away yet, a, a no. breakaway. This is our second woman, and it is a quite a distance now. This is going to be quite a, a, a comeback if Jenny Hansen is to defend her title here at Vincent Lopet. It's uh, well over two and a half minutes. It's going to be closer to three, maybe even over three minutes. Yeah, passing three minutes. So that is quite a distance, isn't it? That's going to be very, very hard to, yeah, to close in on. You never know, as a World Cup skier, you may be not uh, super experienced uh, in the 90k race. You may be hit the wall. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> it's a far distance. Uh, 3 minutes 11 seconds, but, uh, yeah. But again, what we talked about earlier, she's got that uh, advantage of being with these guys here. 
We can yeah. just pull her along and, and keep her going. For sure. Now you see Tinel. It's the first time you go really, really hard. He's pushing very hard indeed. 1k to go to Högberg. <laughs> Your prediction could be right. <laughs> exactly the same place as uh, the last two times he has uh, been doing this. So the tactics haven't changed, you no. could say, for the, from the Swede. Why change a winning concept? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So we're just looking at the map and well, this is where they are at the moment. That is what has been covered. But not so fast as he has done uh, the years before. He's not breaking the group so much. I think we're going to see one, one more. So 2005, in your, in your second placing at this point in the race, how many were in that uh, leading pack? I don't really remember, but the last 2K we were 16 people. 16. But then uh, uh, when we enter Mora Park and just uh, when we go underneath the, the road, uh, there was a big crash. Okay. So we were. Uh, uh, Took out think, quite a few of the competitors. <laughs> yeah. So we were taking out maybe 8, 10 people. Okay. And you see Rickardson goes in uh, the own track there. So of course there's been a lot of uh, snow laid throughout the track, some parts of the track. Yeah. To prepare the tracks, the of course. And most is the natural snow. Yeah. So 19 and a half kilometers to go, 2 hours 53 minutes and 30 seconds they've been going and that leading group just starting to pull away a little bit. Seven skiers putting a little bit of distance on there, led by Jerry Arlin. Coming into Hawk Bay after 71 kilometers. Jerry Arlin in the lead. Crosses in a time, 2 hours 54.10 seconds. Rajak in fourth at the moment. Alklin Jorgen is up there as is his brother. So 7 seconds back to the 12th place. Under 10 seconds to the 15th place, Arnie Post. And we have Lars Sutter. Of course, this is the second to last control station on the course. I think uh, Don Edrickerson is still looking uh, very comfortable in his ski, on, on his skis. Yeah, there he is at the front, wearing the, the blue racing suit. Now you have a fast downhill as well, and then you enter the flat part of the last flat part of the course, 19k. So then it's not much uh, uphills at all. 
We are talking about times before, so maybe I should mention also the the girls' time. Uh, Vibeke Skofteru was uh, passing uh, uh, Oxberg at uh, 2.46.50. So uh, the record time, uh, so, which is the end time, 4 hours 17. Uh, they pass uh, Oxberg at uh, 2 hours uh, 53. So that's uh, a little bit more than 6 minutes. On the uh, record? Yeah. Wow. So we could see a new record here for the woman in Barcelona 2012. And when you look at the difference between her and the other skiers in the women's race, it's quite a big distance. It's about what, five minutes back to Serena Bona in third place. But it's pretty close about the, the second and third place. Yeah, certainly a big fight there for the remaining two spots. Well, of course, three spots on the podium if she can hold on. I'll tell you what I've seen in this race, which I've seen throughout Ski Classics this year, is Stanislav Rajak really sitting in behind. You very rarely see him leading. Yeah. Unless it's a sprint. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, sometimes I think he, he goes a little bit too hard. And uh, as the same as Jerry uh, Arlen, they go for the sprints, they go for the try to break out like Yari did before. So I think they waste too much energy. So uh, I think it's important to have that in, in the last uh, 5k, last 3k, last uh, 10k. It depends on uh, how the situation going to be. But if you uh, compare that to Tinel, he's go uh, solid pace until he goes and then he goes really, really fast. Yeah. So I think it's uh, that's a better tactic to go. If you're gonna go, you go really hard, or you go like uh, yeah, average speed or normal yeah. speed. Just sit back and yeah. Well, it looks like uh, Stanislav Rajak is listening to us because he's taking the lead there on uh, the third track, <laughs> leading from the front, moving across onto the second. So he is doing a bit of work at the front. Of course, he must see this as his big chance to win Vasilopit. I mean, he's this is his 14th Vasilopit. For sure. And I mean, uh, he's second place last year, third place in 2010, third place in 2009. So you got the lead here, Jürgen Auklan. It's a fairly decent lead too. It's about well, 40 odd meters. I will not say it was a breakout, but uh, he, he got the, the gap anyway. Yeah. So now we're going to see if there's any tactics behind. If the, how the team extra personnel do now. So of course, his brother Anders was in that uh, pack as well. And Jerry as well. And we're searching for his second title, Vassal Oppet, for Jürgen Auflund champion here in 2008 six times he's been on the podium in uh, Mora he's picked up one victory already in 2012 at Masia Longa where he came back from a, a broken pole early, he was about, from memory about a minute behind at the first control station there yeah, mm. we're, we're just uh, tired in the beginning and just uh, come just from nowhere came from nowhere, <laughs> exactly <laughs> Of course, it was the battle with the two brothers at the finishing line. He had a seventh place showing at the Tatu Marathon in our last ski classics. Now we see Jarelin is not uh, doing any big uh, work in the group. She's holding yes. them back somewhat. Yeah. It's and that is a quite pretty a lead. big uh, gap yeah, now. Definitely. Amazing. Seven seconds with the GPS measurement, so it's a rear track, so it's not uh, in the front of the uh, chasing group. Yeah, you can barely see them in the back. 
with uh, just over 16 kilometers to go. Is this a good move from the Norwegian? Yeah, I think so, absolutely. It can be a, a winning move. Depends on uh, what they do and uh, uh, how they do it in the in the chasing group. Is there someone who is going to go for it, then it just can be pun and then they are uh, together again. Or uh, they have problems to uh, get together and uh, go for it and then the times will fly. Yeah. And then you have one minute and then uh, it's hard to catch one minute. Yeah, definitely. So now it's just uh, seven sec uh, just before seven seconds, then it's not a uh, very long time to, uh, or uh, hard to catch. It's even longer now. Let's see if it's possible to take a time here. Yeah, it looks like it's growing, that's for sure. Uh, a little bit, 11 seconds, 10, 11 seconds now. And Tinelli is up in the lead. Oi, oi, oi. It's smacking to the scooter. Well, I've got a question here on the Facebook from Mary. She's asking about, uh, I'm assuming Peter Nortuk. She's got uh, Thomas Nortuk here, but uh, he is not in the race, unfortunately. He's had to pull out with an illness. He was the big news, of course, coming into this Vasa Lopet. He made it very clear that it was his goal for the year to, to try and win Vasa Lopet. So there you see the lead now, 13 seconds between Auckland and Rajak. So 15.3 kilometers to go. Of course, apologies, Mary. Of course, you would be meeting Thomas, of course, the brother of Peter Nortug. We're just trying to find out where he actually is at the moment. In fact, he's in the race, certainly not up there near the front. Of course, it certainly was a big blow. We've seen the great Peter Nortug, the Norwegian star. And well, unfortunately, illness has knocked out quite a few stars from this year's race. Oscar Svart, of course, Sandra Hansen for the woman. He's continuing to push hard here. Now they're coming to Lede. This is a very small village. I'll tell you what, here in Mora at the moment, there's not too much space. It has certainly filled up very, very quickly, and it's impressive to see. Take a time there. This really could be the winning move. Good strategy from Jorgen Alklin. Time will tell if it was too early, if it was a perfect timing. Yeah, it was not a really a breakout uh, try from him. It was more likely that uh, the other people in the group didn't uh, 
watch out any guts and meters and then was no one interesting to to follow exactly and then the uh, seconds just uh, run away there they have taken some time it's more like 16 seconds now wow oh, that is quite a lead be interesting to see if he can uh, continue to build on it. 18 seconds uh, uh, in the GPS measurement. But that's the rear track, so he, maybe he's not in the front in the chasing group. Exactly. So as mentioned, looking to become just the 16th foreign winner in uh, Varsalopet is Jorgen Auklin looking to pick up his second title, looking to pick up a third title for the Auklin family. Of course, Anders picking it up in 2004. Now we see her go, really go in the chasing group here. thought it was Jerry Arlin tried to go away. That's interesting. Uh, the teammates try to break out. Oh, it's looks like a skier here from yeah. Look on the from United, United Bakeries. Then you have Tenelle in second place, Yuri Arlin. Then you have uh, Daniel Rickerson fourth place, and then you have Stanislav Riesa. That is one dangerous looking chasing pack, I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's low odds on uh, that group. I think they will catch him pretty soon if they have that, uh, that speed. It's look like Jurgen Brink is hungry on the third victory. He, he looks very good. He looks, uh, he looks as though he's in his groove from Team Extra Personnel. Of course, Team Extra Personnel also looking to extend on their lead in the overall teams event for Ski Classics 2012. Currently in the lead over Team Experit. We haven't really seen too many of the Team Experit skiers so far. I didn't take any time now, but... Uh, this looks like it's pretty equal to before. Yeah. And you see there. Tonight. That's probably a good move for him. He might have known that Eileen might have just been holding off a little bit and that gap was just getting... A, Quite a bit bigger to our leader, of course. As we mentioned before, uh in the big downhills from Eversberg, uh, you have an uh, uh, opportunity or uh, uh, two different choices to do. In, if you want to go behind the scooter or if you want to uh, go in a uh, own track. So you see, uh, uh, it's uh, the snowmobile uh, blowing in some snow into the track. So sometimes it uh, uh, go a little bit faster, and sometimes the, the, uh, the tracks uh, uh, are slower. But uh, as you see here, Jürgen Auckland is uh, going in the, the the track all the time, just be, uh, behind the scooter. Getting in the draft of the sn snowmobile there. So it should not be so icy in the, the other tracks, otherwise I would guess he will go there. And now he has a little bit 
right turn and then it's a little bit uphill. Then it's in Krongåsen. So you're gonna turn left here in the picture and the right arm for him. Well, he just had a, a quick look around there and he would have seen that there's quite a big difference, or distance I should say, between himself and that chasing pack. So that would give him a little bit of a extra kick, you could say, knowing he's in a, a fairly strong position here in this race. And this place uh, called uh, Krongåsen is the, just a house called Krongåsen. Uh, Staffan Larsson is uh, uh, the old days uh, doing some uh, breakout. So here we have an artificial line taking its time. So this is going to be very, very interesting to see just what the lead is at the moment. I'll tell you what, here in Morda, all the Swedish flags are out. <laughs> and uh, they're looking on the big screen, and I bet they're wanting to know what the difference is. They want a Swede up there, and I'm sure they would love it to be Jürgen Brink, or of course, as you mentioned, hometown uh, favourite or local, you could say, Daniel Tinell. Uh, they're not so far behind now. Uh, 16 seconds. Well, that's not too bad. Not as bad as uh, we thought it was. Sixteen seconds is sixteen seconds, so they have to uh, do pretty much uh, work to to catch uh, to catch him. But to uh, go in the, in the front, as you're going to do now, that's a little bit, little bit uh, harder and to be in the pack. So it's still 11k to go, so... Yeah, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> it's going to be very, very interesting. As mentioned, uh, the locals, I'm <laughs> sure they want to Swede up there somewhere. Of course yourself as well, being a patriotic Swede, I'm sure you would like to see a Swedish uh, participant up there. Of course, but I'm uh, not a patriot, but uh, I want to see the, the best skiers win. Of course, definitely. So the, uh, if it's the Norwegian or a, uh, or a, a Brit or <laughs> someone <laughs> else, it's, it's okay for me. What about the sole New Zealander in there? Would you be happy if he crossed the line first? No, no. I would be. I would be very happy. <laughs> <laughs> now we see the back is scuffed through there. Right? And this is going to be interesting. We need to keep an eye on this because remember, she was about, what was it, six minutes faster than uh, the record for a woman. Yes. And see the distance back to Jenny Hansen's as well. See if it's a uh, decrease or increase. And of course, also to see if uh, Jenny's been able to hold on to that second spot. Of course, it was really close between uh, second and well, fifth place. Yeah. Really nice diagonal. Very stylish, isn't it, from the Norwegian? So there you see it. Three hours, 13 minutes, 56.9 seconds from so the Norwegian. That three hours, 14. And then the record time they have in. They had the 3 hours 31 minutes. So she is well in front of it. Absolutely smashing it. So what uh, a fantastic race this is turning out to be for the Norwegian. And the uh, chasing group is uh, breaking up a little bit. It's just 10 seconds now. I love to see that this is exciting. <laughs> oh, definitely. Definitely. 
we've seen it so many times this year in the ski classics there's been some absolutely fantastic finals uh finishing line yeah right on the line i think two times already this year it's been under a second where the victory has been taken yeah and also this they uh, put some extra color energy to this race here break out uh, when it's uh, 15k to go or a little bit more than 15 and uh, what gonna happen exactly and just looking at that picture there it looks like it's closing uh, yeah the distance looks like it's getting shorter it was 10 seconds before then it's maybe less now we'll see i uh, didn't hold the camera So the helicopter shot overhead under 10 kilometers to go. And very soon into Eldris, the last drink station. So big left corner and then the right corner and then a little small downhill and they are in Eldris. And there's a lot of work ahead for Jorgen Auckland and <laughs> just the way that gap is closing, you just got to wonder, was that such a smart move? You can imagine it uh, will hurt in his body now. The arms uh, will aching. But for, for Jürgen, it's just uh, try to go. It's no idea for him to try to wait on the, the other group. Maybe it's, the yeah, gap is growing again. Because if you, if you look at it, I mean, if they do catch him up and it comes down to a sprint, then he, he's going to be absolutely exhausted, isn't he? Yeah, for sure. Then it's better to go uh, go for it and just try. So nine guys really in this chasing pack, although they are fairly well spread. Tainel in fourth place at the moment. And it is Laugeland who's bringing up the rear there for that chasing pack. And he's at 14.7 seconds behind. I got the text here from uh, Oskar Schwerd who was sick and sitting home uh, watching the race. Uh, he says uh, that we can see here Jarralin he gets a good go here. Just uh, uh, Tunnel and uh, Jürgen Brink doing the work. And now we're gonna see how the t time is. And I think this is gonna be quite a margin to second place. There you see it. Wow. Four, 20, where is Jenny Hansson? Jenny Hansson was, crossing uh, in fourth now. Now it's Seriana Bonner who's uh, coming there. Okay, so she has well and truly dropped off. They both have uh, white uh, race suits, but Sierran Bonner has uh, Alpine boots and uh, the the brand Alpine. And uh, Jenny Hansson has uh, Solomon boots. So did we get a prediction there from Oscar Swad in that text message as well? Yeah, he said uh, watch out for Jerry Arlin and then uh, Daniel Rickardson. That uh, Daniel Tinell and uh, Brink is uh, doing the work. Yeah. So what, no one else is doing it. So uh, also Real Track has a good journey. Oh, definitely. The record time uh, for the ladies is uh, Karen Petty from uh, uh, racing for. Uh, Mura, 
but she was an uh, American citizen, raised and born in the US. Nice. That was quite some time ago. There we had the Kransmas and the Kranskulla. We're going to hand out uh, to the winner, the big Krans. And what's uh, for those non Swedes out there? What uh, what does that mean? What do they do? Yeah, what are they doing? It's an old tradition that you give this. Uh, I don't know the English word. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Neither do I. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I have to check that out. Well, there you see. The gap now, and well, it's not much. 15, 20 meters. So they have really eaten into that lead from Jorgen Auckland. And it's Daniel Tenan doing it. And they have closed that gap fairly quickly too. Now they are a group again. <laughs> Just like that. You and see Jimmy Johnson uh, nearly at the back of the changing group. Well, this really does make for a very, very exciting finish now. So we have Jürgen Auckland in the lead, Daniel Tenell, and we have uh, Jerry Arlen. We have uh, Jürgen Brink, I guess. Yes, we have Stanislav Rierschak, Daniel Rickardsson. We had... Uh, was it uh, Schelsta or maybe it was Elda Running? Then we have Jimmy Johnson. And now to the right is maybe Anders Oakland. And then the last uh, one, United Bakery guy. I don't know really. There's uh, Laugaland. It's Laugaland or yeah. Henriksen. So obviously, so, yeah. pack, uh, <laughs> who do you pick? I mean, there's so, <laughs> so many of them are so strong at the finishing line. If it stays like this with, well, 500 meters to go, it's. Uh, it's anyone's race, isn't it? Yeah. But as you mentioned, and uh, well brought up by Oscar Svard, uh, Arlene has just been sitting back a little bit over this time where they've closed that gap, and it'll be interesting to see what kind of push he has to the finishing line. As mentioned, he didn't quite have the best of finishes at the Tatu Marathon, but of course he's on home soil now. It's the one that everyone wants to win. For sure, Vasalopis is the, the biggest among these uh, long distance races. So, even if you're not in, uh, in Sweden, you want to, to win Vasalopis. So, it's really big in uh, Norway and in every country. Do you think that we, we need to have an introduction of uh, more longer races as well? Of course, this is 90 kilometers, and the, the, the next one, the next biggest before that is what, 75? 73 kilometers. Yeah, and uh, the biggest, uh, if you see uh, yeah, media and uh, history and so on, I think uh, the most and uh, what uh, the top athletes want to win, I think that's uh, second place is uh, Marcia Longa. Marcia Longa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Marcia Longa is absolutely the biggest, and then I think Marcia Longa. Yeah. It's such an interesting race, that one, too. It's fantastic to finish. It's uh, just to watch people struggle after going uh, 70 kilometers and then having to do that last two three kilometers straight uphill for sure i can't stand anymore i get a little bit nervous actually <laughs> <laughs> well, i'll tell you what martin is moving around the commentary box he is very excited indeed i don't know why jergen auckland still is uh, in the lead <laughs> he should take in a place a little bit longer in the back You see Jim Johnson in the on track there, far to the right. Well, could today be that uh, that breakthrough period for Jimmy Johnson? Can he finally pick up that first win? Because we talked about him a, a couple of times throughout the race.
So this last uh, 5.7 kilometers, it's pretty flat, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's uh, flat. You enter the uh, ski stadium soon in uh, in Mura, called Hemus. Then you have a small uphill, but not much. So it's uh, it's nearly flat the whole part. The last 19k. So it's uh, you should never say uphill. It's a uh, a little bit different to, uh, to flat. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> if you come, oh, is he here, Don Etanel? Yes, he goes. He's pushing. <laughs> he is going hard. Alin riding behind him, looking to keep up the pace. Well, could this be a fourth title for the Swede? Everyone is uh, still there, so it's not s so strong as it has been before. Actually, no one dropping off. I will also say uh, watch out for Don Erik Kjellsson. So five kilometers to go. These uh, competitors have now completed 85 kilometers of this 90 kilometer course. And well, we've got about nine competitors there pushing hard, pushing to the finishing line, of course. And it's start to be a little bit uh, tough race for the bakery guys in the back. And also Anders Auckland, I think Jimmy Johnson is struggling himself as well. Of course, the, the honour of uh, winning this event comes with prize money as well. The winner will receive a cheque of 75,000 Swedish crowns, which is a, a good payday, of course. And on top of that, if they won the sprint stages as well, second place will get 50,000, third will get 30,000. So roughly for the winner, it's about, well, roughly about 7,500 Euro. So it's Daniel Tenell, it's Jerry Arlin, it's Jürgen Brink, Stanislav Reyrsak, it's uh, Daniel Rickerson, and then uh, um, Jürgen Auckland. Then was a little bit uh, of a gap, but now they are all together. It's also interesting to look at the time as well. Just under three hours and 30 minutes. Three hours, uh, 17 seconds and 50 seconds, 17 minutes and 50 seconds in Eldris, and then uh, it's this, uh, similar to the record time, so. Okay. Whoa, so whoa, whoa. we could <laughs> see a record in both the men and women. Vasilop at 2012. Well, what a race this has panned out to be. Daniel Tynell in the lead at the moment. And I'll tell you what, here in Mora, the stands are full. The home straight is chock-a-block with uh, people all looking at the big stand. And well, as mentioned, I'm sure 99% of them wanting a Swedish victory here in uh, Mora. And if they do break the record, uh, I don't know this year, but last year there uh, was a, a car, a F Volkswagen uh, oh. Golf. So it could be great to win a car, uh, add to the prize money. That is, uh, that's not bad at all. <laughs> not bad whatsoever, of course. Volkswagen, one of the sponsors for this race. And GTI as well, so. Well, our current leader in ski classics still there, Mr. Man in Black, Stanislav Rajak. There we have the small uphill in Hemus. And then you have a steeper uh, the downhill here. So can we uh, have a look uh, in the gliding if there are any difference? 
So this could be the last little bit of liquids for these guys? Yeah, I think this is the last uh, time they have a drink. Do they drink uh, later on, then uh, they, it's possible to, uh, to take up the, the energy that you drink so, so late. So here you have a 3.5k left. So up to the left here you have the ski stadium. I don't know if we get a better view, but... Ah, getting more and more interesting. It is getting very <laughs> nerve-wracking, I'll tell you what. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way it should finish, I'll tell you what. And it's incredible to have such a tight finish after 90 kilometers. A breakout and then he was catched and then a big uh, group again. Exactly, he got up to what is about 18 seconds at one point at uh, Jürgen Auckland and well, that lead was just eaten up by that chasing pack. I think we see maybe one more breakout from someone and try to break out. Then I think the people wait uh, until the last case and then... Well it's funny, we were talking before we went on air and we are talking about Daniel Tynell and we talk a little bit about him as well in the, earlier in the race and I was mentioning that he hasn't really done anything this year. Uh, in 20th place at Shizuska Parasanska, didn't race in Marcia Longa, 15th at the Koenig. Uh, didn't race in Tartu and you said you can never rule him out. He's always yeah. going to be there or thereabouts. Yeah. It's something uh, special. Just uh, if you mention Barcelona to Tutanel, then he gets a lot more energy. It's uh, when you uh, like a beer. He's sleeping all the winter until Barcelona, but then he wakes up. <laughs> it comes out of hibernation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very, very tight indeed. Of course, uh, Tainel looking for his fourth title, looking to go ahead of Oscar Svard, both of those two on three victories apiece in Barcelona. It's ten skiers. There's uh, ten skiers, yeah. Three wins or more in Barcelona. Of course, that legend, that is uh, Moranice. Is that how you pronounce it? Muranese, yeah. Muranese, yeah. Nine victories, not bad at all. Of course, you, you cannot write off Jürgen Brink as well. We talk about uh, Tinal's favourite race. I mean, Brink, uh, Brink. two-time defending champion. Yeah, it doesn't get sure. much better than that. <laughs> and then you have uh, Daniel Rickardson on the outside in the blue racing suit. Now you're coming into Mura Parken. It's a sort of a camping area and a hotel. So just uh, less than uh, 2k to go. Well, exciting <laughs> stuff and uh, that time is looking very good indeed. Fossil up at 2012. Well, it's going to be a big one. <laughs> <laughs> of course, just a reminder, on the women's front, it's looking like it's going to be a comfortable new record if, of course, Skoftarud was able to keep up that pace. It was something like six, it was even more than six minutes, wasn't it? It was up to around 10 minutes ahead of that uh, record time. Watch out for Ricardo now. So to now that Brink, Rickardson, now the ones leading those three lanes at the moment. Looks like out wide is uh, one of the Auckland brothers. And as 
we mentioned before there is a small small uphill on the on the finish straight 100 meters from finish which is uh, new this year so people uh, uh, or crowd can uh, walk underneath and it's an add some extra for for the athletes that last uh, 500 meters yeah if 90 kilometers isn't enough we'll just put in a slight little <laughs> hill at the end just to just to make it a little bit more fun for you <laughs> I think the first guy who uh, coming down the the small downhill is the winner. I think it's hard to pass from the downhill and uh, and into finish. Yeah, well, at the bottom of that downhill, there's about well, 110 meters. I had a look at it yesterday. It's about 110 meters to the finishing line. After that uh, little, about 110, about, about 108 and 112. Uh, I measured it, <laughs> <laughs> and it was about 110. <laughs> Now is it Jimmy Johnson? He's going to take his first victory in Vasa Lopez. I oh, missed the consistency in uh, Ski Classics this year. And what a tremendous effort it would be if he is able to push it home. Jürgen Haaklan is struggling now. Well, Jimmy Johnson certainly is the youngest in that pack by quite, uh, quite some years as well. Yeah, and the uh, race suit in the middle there with uh, some uh, dots on it. Uh, Johan Schjelstad, the sprinter from Norway. So we're getting very, very close to home now. The finishing straight here in Amora. Brink. Jürgen Brink, take it or Rajak in behind him. Tinel on the second track. Watch Rajak, is looking strong. Rickardson there or thereabouts too. And as you can see, the locals have lined the streets. They take the track in the shadow, not in the out in the sun. Because I'm changing the tracks. Well, Rickardson's out wide. Steps in. It's looked similar to last year. Jürgen Brink in the lead. Well, an action replay. Jerry Arlen is not uh, making it this year. Rickardson, the last hill now. Oh, this is exciting. This is that last bend. They come down the home straight now. Brink it is, who's in the lead. Can he hold on? Rickardson it is, pushing in lane two. Rajak moving Rajak. out to the far lane. It looks like it's going to be Brink. It is going to be Brink. He's going to take it for his third straight title. It's absolutely <laughs> tremendous. <laughs> what a race. Wow. What a finish to that. Brink once again. Hugs all round from his teammates and wow. What a tremendous finish. Oh, it's amazing. Three hours, 38.41. That is a new record, record. by 17 seconds. seconds. Wow. <laughs> wow, yeah. 16 seconds, I must say. Wow, that is still tremendous stuff. Jürgen Brink becoming the king of Vasa Lopet, his third straight title. He joins Oscar Svard and Daniel Tenel as three time winners here in this great race. Wow, 90 kilometers. So a replay here of the finish, and it was tight. Brink in the closest lane. Rickardson was pushing hard, as it was Rajak. And well, what a finish. Tynell, of course, was there. And a new record. And look at him. He is a one happy camper, and so he should be. Three hours. 38 minutes and 57 seconds and you well it, that was the record time but he has beaten it and just how close it was on the finishing line well, a 
was just absolutely incredible to see a race over 90 kilometers come down to the wire. Three hours, 38 minutes and 41.3 seconds. A new record in Vasilopit. The 88th edition, the fifth of seven races in Ski Classics. And, well, my co-commentator, Martin Larshan, down now on the finishing line. Trying to get one of those skiers up here into the commentary box to give us their thoughts about the race. And what a tremendous race it was, too. So I'll pass over now to my co-commentator, Martin Larson, who has Jorgen Auckland with us in the commentary box. I say welcome to Jürgen Auckland. Thanks. And congratulations to a good race. You, uh, <laughs> okay, you didn't make it in the end, but you put some uh, extra energy to the race the last uh, uh, 15k. You were in the lead with, uh, I think it was uh, 18 seconds. What yeah. did you think there? Uh, I felt tired all day and uh, up to Oxbury it was really hard. And uh, then suddenly I, I got a gap. and. Uh, then I just had to go. Uh, I tried to push hard, but uh, I really didn't believe it will uh, it would uh, be enough to the whole way in. But uh, I was tired, and in the end, when they caught me, I was I was dead. You were tired. <laughs> yeah, I was really tired, and in the sprint, I had no no chance. But you, uh, when you uh, got these uh, 18 seconds, uh, you just uh, go for it. Yeah, there I was just no idea to uh, wait on them. No, because uh, then I knew that. Uh, the others had to uh, catch me and that Anders and Jerry could uh, stay behind. Yeah. Uh, but they were <laughs> tired as well, obviously, <laughs> since they didn't have enough power in the end. Yeah. So, but uh, Brink was uh, impressive, third victory, so he's and a strong, on a strong man. And record time as well. A new record as well? Yeah, yeah. 16 seconds. Wow! So he should thank it was me. A, <laughs> it was a fast race. How did it feel during the, the whole race? Uh, how, how was, how was the track? I, the track was good, um, but uh, I, I was a bit tired. Uh, I was struggling the whole time, but uh, I had good Some skis and uh, lots of lots of double pulling. It was so fast conditions that it was really hard to get a gap because yeah. it was easy to stay behind and uh, yeah. So not a good uh, good day, you say, and but you have the lead with 18 seconds and yeah, so it was, on. So it was, I think it's it, impressive. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was uh, really fun, but then I just had to go for it. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So now you're going for uh, Birkebeinen and then uh, Norefjellstrandet, or yeah. uh, what's now the plan? Yeah, it's uh, Birkebeinen is next two weeks, and then uh, it's the, um, the Norefjell, and then it's rest. <laughs> <laughs> rest for a while. Yeah. We say, oh, there we see the finish line, and uh, Tinal was second, we can see. <gasps> So we say uh, congratulations anyway, even uh, yeah. if you may be a little bit disappointed in the last K here. Yeah, it was so fun. It was fun to be in the lead, and uh, <laughs> it's like that's what you dream about: being in the lead in Oslo when it's 10k left. But uh, I wasn't strong enough, so uh, yeah, should have been a little bit stronger. But yeah. uh, it was, it was, it was a fun race. It comes more year, and Oslo but still continues. Yeah, so. try again next year. So it's it's so fun, and uh, so I, I'll be back next year. Yeah, congratulations and uh, good luck. Uh, for the next races. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, fantastic there to hear the words there of uh, Jorgen Auckland. He had such a fantastic race and uh, as you mentioned, Martin, he made the he made the race interesting, didn't he? He made the first break, he got ahead and... Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think it's uh, good to see and uh, as a spectator, uh, a viewer, it's uh, nice to see when uh, people try. And sometimes they success and sometimes they yeah, will be catched and then uh, maybe, as he said, tired and they have, don't have the energy to, to go for it. Of course, as you said, I, I mean, he is a little bit disappointed, of course, not to take it out, but uh, uh, it's cool, still a great victory, finishing, of course, 
in uh, tenth place, just 14.6 seconds behind. There you see the finishing for the men, and look how tight it was between second and third place. Tinel it was who took it over Stanislav Rajak, who, well, will hold on, I assume, to the lead in the ski classics for 2012. Daniel Rickardson had an impressive race too to finish in fourth place in his third Vasa Lopet. Daniel Rickardson, it's just four uh, uh, tenths of a second to, uh, to victory and just fourth place, so it's... <laughs> what can you say? Exactly. It's tight. It is very, very tight. And a new uh, record time uh, is interesting as well. Yeah, new record time, three hours... 38. We'll cross down now to the champion. See what he has to say. Yeah. Also, 2012, Jorgen Brink. What say you? FN, what cool. Say ya. I was really scared. I thought it was not really, even though I was feeling relatively good. So there's a lot that has to be done. And then, when it was relatively easy for me, many of them, so I don't know what can happen. But to get direct in front of them, Jag är så nöjd så att det finns inte på kartan. Du, um, du skadade ju, alltså du vörpade ju här för inte så länge sedan. Vad, vad säger du om det? Nej men jag, alltså det har jag kunnat ödelagt allting egentligen. Jag har rätt så ont i en hand, inte just nu då men och eh, en axel lite grann fortfarande. Så det är tur att det inte bröt något eller har varit värre. Det var en stav som varit smulare så jag får vara nöjd med att det blev så så att Uh, men jag såg inte så vacker ut uh, i ansiktet då kan jag säga. A couple of questions in, in English, uh, Jorgen. Third time in a row to win uh, the, uh, the Vasa Lopez. <laughs> Amazing day for you, uh, I suppose. Uh, it was a great race. I, I couldn't believe when I started in Salem that I uh, would win for a third time. But uh, my goal was to win, so I'm extremely happy. It was a lot of uh, skiers. There were 10 guys left when it was 10-15 uh, kilometers left. A tactical race in the end and you, you have uh, the tactical uh, in you. Emma's, my goal was uh, you never know what will happen when uh, there are, is a lot of skiers but uh, my goal was to be in the front or at least second so I tried to push quite hard in the end and uh, not full full pull <laughs> what, what I can say but uh, I, uh, I was uh, looking a little behind and see if I can see some skis but no one was I saw some uh, I think that Daniel Rickerson skis at the top but uh, it will be it's not so easy to uh, pass in the last hundred meters and it was uh, pretty similar to last year when you won here you took the the right lane it was the best lane to take I think so. This uh, it's a little bit faster than the others, so especially when there is sunny. So my goal was to uh, to uh, to take that lane. So it was perfect for me. Congratulations. Thank you. So the winning words are there from our champion Jürgen Brink for the third time. The 37-year-old suite of the delight of the locals here in Mora. And what a great race it was, Martin. Yeah, it's fantastic. It was lovely to watch and see the finish here. It's very tight. Four uh, people uh, in four tenths of a second. Ah, amazing. Yeah, just some of the highlights there throughout <laughs> the race. 90 kilometers, kilometers the battle from Salin to Mora. First place and a new record time, three hours, 38 minutes, 41.3 seconds. As we look at the standings for ski classics for the men, Rajak holds on to first place, 720 points. Jürgen Auckland stays in second, as does Jimmy Jonsson in third. Jürgen Brink, though, he's the big mover. He moves from sixth place up into fourth with uh, 482 points. So it really is heating up. He's got quite a lead now, does Stanislav Rajak, with two races to go. Yeah, it's a bigger uh, lead now than before, but a uh, close up uh, behind. So uh, Jimmy Johnson is uh, catching some points on uh, Jürgen, and uh, we have Jürgen Brink uh, coming up as well.
We're back with uh, some live pitches, number 189. Roland there from uh, Norway. I think we have some girls there. And it's uh, Vibek Skofterud. And what time will we have on her? In Eldris, she passed in three hours, 42 uh, minutes. And the record time there will be three hours, 51. So wow. it's uh, nine minutes. Nine minutes. That is huge. Oh, you're picking a, a fast race. <laughs> yeah. And it certainly has proven. But more importantly, who got the closest time to what we picked earlier? What was your time? I think you said yeah. about 3.49 to 3.51. I don't remember. And I think I said uh, 3.47 <laughs> to 3.49. So, Okay. <laughs> you were the expert. <laughs> <laughs> so in the next race, I think we should change roles, maybe. Yep. You saw there he uh, taping some, uh, uh, I don't, don't know if it was uh, Enervit uh, liquid, so he has some extra energy, so uh, easy and uh, easy to reach, so it's, uh, you don't have to be handed the, the drink during the race. Uh, if you miss some drinks, you have some extra. Extra backup. Yep. So there is our lead up. She looks a little bit tired. Right next to competitor 194, who is uh, Tobias Avitsan. Yep. I think that was the uh, battle yet. Okay. He was uh, struggling for uh, the world championship in rope holding, but didn't make it there, so then he went for Vasa Lopet. Okay. <laughs> Daniel Tunnell, uh, second two years ago, you have won uh, three times, you are second today, what do you say? Today I'm, I'm, I'm really, really happy, because I haven't been on, in, on this level, been able to, to, uh, to compete on this level for two years, so it's, it's, I'm so satisfied with this race today, and I felt extremely strong the whole way actually from the start the first uphill uh, I took the decision actually maybe a week ago to, to double pull the whole race without any grip at all um, and, and felt strong from the beginning all the way to the finish uh, you tried a couple of attacks in the end but uh, you couldn't get rid of the others no we were so many and, and it was so hard so Five, six kilometers from the finish, uh, I think we all realized it's going to be a, a sprint. But I felt quite strong in the sprint also. Um, had a good position behind Jürgen, of course, uh, but got a bit uh, stuck in the last 100 meters. I didn't get the chance to, to uh, really push him. <laughs> Daniel Rickardsson's fault. <laughs> Can we blame him? No. no it was uh, absolutely maximum for me today, so I'm, I'm, I'm really glad. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, you can see here that uh, Daniel uh, Tunnel was a little bit blocked in the end, but uh, as he said, he didn't uh, have so much uh, energy and uh, couldn't do so much more, though. But he, he, he seemed very happy with his race. As yeah. he mentioned, you know, he hasn't been able to compete at this level for, for quite some time, and, and to cross in second place is a tremendous result. Yeah, he was uh, sick uh, a lot last year. And uh, this year he has been uh, struggling uh, nearly all season. Uh, sick in Marcia Longa, come back in Koenig, did a solid race. And then he didn't uh, do Tarte Marathon, back home training and come back. And as he said, uh, feel great. So that's uh, interesting. And uh, also that he was second place without uh, uh, kick wax. So that's the best uh, place uh, ever. And it, it was interesting without. how he said he made the decision so long ago. I don't know why either, because maybe it was uh, on uh, Thursday uh, he took the deci decision that it was uh, 10 degrees warm here in uh, Eversberg. And then uh, 
he realized it's going to be uh, cold uh, during Sunday and then it's going to be very fast. Well, it's uh, the second time he has finished in second place in Varsalopity or second place in 2010. And a big improvement from 12 months ago where he crossed the line in 20th. So yep. no wonder he's uh, one happy camper down there. So Jürgen Brink is one of few that have been uh, winning three times in a row. Yeah, it's, uh, it really is a tremendous achievement. Soon we can maybe pronounce Vivek uh, Skofterud as a winner. Well, the last competitor you could say that uh, did the treble was uh, Jan Ottosson from uh, Sweden, but uh, his was kind of broken up. He won in 1989. The event in 1990 was cancelled, but he came back and won 1991 and 1992. So yeah. you can give him the, the treble there. Yeah. And of course, you've got uh, Janis Stefansson, who, Stefansson, I should say. He won between 1962 to 1966. So the focus now, of course, on the woman. And now we're going to see two new records here in 2012. I don't uh, think she's going to miss the, the record time now with nine minutes in, uh, in Eldris. Oh, something <laughs> major has to happen if that is to be the case. You see there she don't have so much grip left so she have to take out the skis from the track and just go for it. If we just look down uh, back to the men and uh, we're the uh, participants ended up finishing. Well, Jerry Aileen were finished in ninth place. Jorgen Auckland, of course, who we had the honour to get a few words from about uh, five or so minutes ago. He finished in tenth place, which uh, he certainly did make the race very, very interesting, of course. As we look uh, further down, Ricard Andreasen from Team Experit. He finished in 16th place. Thomas Hendrickson just one place ahead of him in 15th. Annie Post from Team United Bakeries in 17th. And uh, I'll tell you one person who's uh, missing off that list so far who we talked about earlier from Team Experience, Matthias Fredriksson yeah who hasn't from what I've seen crossed the line yet but uh, from Canada crossed the line uh, right there uh, Brian McIver good effort from a Canadian yeah of course, we're going live to Canada, so I'm sure there'll be some very happy supporters there for him crossing the line here at Varsalopit 2012. It looks really happy as well, so that's that's good. That's uh, often a good sign. <laughs> well, I suppose anyone who crosses the line here should be happy. <laughs> it I is such a an big achievement. effort to go here, and uh, yeah, not everyone is satisfied, but uh, of many course. people sh should be. 90k is pretty long. Ah, definitely, definitely. As we continue to follow our leading woman. It's just over four hours. You see the beautiful clear skies here, Varsalopit, the 88th edition, our leading woman. 
looking to smash the record here today. As mentioned at the last clock, and she was some nine minutes ahead of uh, that record held by Petty from Morda. As uh, the male participants continue to cross the uh, finishing line here in Mora. And well, at the moment, once again, Martin getting uh, some of the competitors up here to have a few words after the race. Well, it's uh, fantastic now to welcome into the commentary box Jerry Arlin. I'll pass you over to Amartin. I say welcome to Jerry Arlin. Thanks. How do you feel a couple of minutes uh, after the finish? Are yeah, you tired? Of, of, yeah, of course you are. Uh, the arms is really tired and. <laughs> I'm not satisfied with the ninth place, but uh, I had some problem this year, so yeah, I didn't knew how how the the shape was and everything. So, but uh, how was the tactics during the race and uh, when uh, Jurgen Auckland went away? What did you do in the pack? We saw your of course with the the team. We we must try to help each other, and uh, we don't take the when when Jurgen was leaving us, we. Uh, Brink and Tunnel was was getting the gap, so I yep. just stayed behind. So we was chatting here a little bit before that uh, you had a good uh, way the the last if you couldn't go in the back on uh, Jürgen Brink and uh, Daniel Tun Tunnel. I felt I felt pretty good actually, like two uh, two kilometer from from this goal, but uh, from the finish. But uh, the last lap, I was really tired and I just you couldn't make it. No. So, so uh, Jürgen Brink was a little bit too strong for you today. Yeah, he was absolutely. But uh, the, best, the best man won again. <laughs> Third time. Third time in a row. Yeah, that's uh, amazing. But for you, it's uh, the next races is uh, Birkebeinen and uh, Norrfjell. Yeah. Exactly. Same as uh, Jürgen. Yeah. Yeah, and you're changing the plan, something with the training, mm -hmm. or you're still going as the plan, or? Yeah, I. I uh, ski after the plan but uh, I had some problem with the with the back and uh, actually the, the technique is not good enough so I, I must try to find that again. So the technique is not good is the uh, the strength as well is uh, weakening a little bit? I don't think it's bit. the strength but uh, I, I don't ski so good so uh, I don't know I must do something about that. We wish you a good luck for the next races Birkebeinen and Norrfjell and uh, Next year we maybe are on the podium and maybe at the top. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> Congratulations again, even if you're not satisfied. Thanks. Bye. Fantastic there to get some words there from Jerry Arlin, one of the, the top stars, of course, in Ski Classics, racing for Team Extra Personnel. A little bit disappointed with his performance today. Yeah, you could uh, see uh, at his face that he was not satisfied. No, certainly not. And I mean, we talked about it earlier, and, uh, and we talked about his uh, his finish at uh, the Tartu, and it, it didn't quite seem right. And he mentioned there he's had some issues with his back, and... Uh, Maybe just explaining a few things there. Yep. Four hours, five minutes for Vibeke Skofterud and less than 1k to go. So uh, she has to beat uh, four hours, uh, 17 minutes. And two seconds. So four hours, uh, 17 minutes and two seconds is the best time so far. 
So she's looking on a very hot prospect, you've got to say, to break that record. Yep. And who would have thought two broken records on uh, the same day, 2012, the 88th edition of Arsa Lopet. As we discussed uh, at the start, I uh, thought it was not uh, going to be a record today because of the uh, uh, yeah, the wind. The wind in 1998 was pretty strong in the back, so yeah. they had a big advantage there. But today, uh, better trained uh, athletes, uh, more of them in the top, they work together and so on. So it's easy to, to break the record then. Yeah, it's crazy when you talk about that wind that they had when their old records stood by uh, Peter Goransson. And to do it today without a wind, it just shows how much of an ex like excellent performance it was. For sure. So soon the last corner for uh, Vibeke Skofterud. And she is uh, cruising here in the women's. She had better technique in the beginning and now. <laughs> <laughs> she is one tired young lady, that is for sure, but uh, she's going to take the podium. She's going to take the top spot after a fantastic race. You see, she is really, really tired. Yeah. 20 more K, then she maybe was uh, not going to be in the lead. Well, I remember but she was leading after 11 kilometers in uh, small gun, and then she dropped that lead, and she was behind by about 40 seconds to uh, Jenny Hansen at the 26 kilometer mark. But from then, she really has gone from strength to strength. And it was interesting before when we looked at uh, the statistics in the gap, she was about four minutes ahead of the second place, who is the youngster from Norway, Lila Fale, Yep, who has taken second place. So that is a, tr a tremendous performance from the 24-year-old. So not too far to go. She's putting in the arms in there already. Uh, she knows she has this one sewn up. She grabs the Norwegian flag just to make it a little bit more difficult. There's still quite a long way to go with just one pole, but <laughs> anyway. Does she know that she's going to break the uh, record? And she comes down the middle. Norwegian flag fluttering in the air. What a tremendous race this is uh, from the Norwegian. And uh, Skofterud it is going across the line in first place here in Amora. So a huge round of applause in a time of... Four hours, eight minutes, and 24 seconds. And that is That's nine fast. minutes. Nine minutes. She has smashed the record. Wow. What an effort. Nine minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> Vibek is, uh, has uh, always said uh, through the years here that uh, she's very good uh, double pulling at double pulling and uh, she has good technique and so on uh, a lot of power a lot of power from the stomach so i'm not uh, very surprised that she gonna that she win today but uh 15 10k 30k uh, as the longest they go in the world cup and now 90k that's a big difference no definitely I'm just waiting to see who will cross the line in second place for the woman. Of course, it was Kvale who was in second place, about four minutes behind. But a huge congratulations to the Norwegian. What a tremendous race for her. As mentioned, she was first through the control station after 11 kilometers, dropped the lead after 26 kilometers but from there she fought back after trailing by about 40 seconds turned it around and well to smash the record by nine minutes to take this win by over four minutes that is uh, quite a dominating race you could say there we have Leila Kvili This is a great result as well for her. Yeah, for sure. I would say it's the best result for her ever. I think she has uh, 
taken some time on being back at the last. Okay, at be back uh, took the flag the last bit, but uh, in Eldris uh, she was uh, four minutes ten after. Now we're up to two minutes twenty-two and uh, a little bit to go. Shall we say less than three thirty? And she has uh, she's had a strong finish. Well, hopefully, very soon we'll be able to cross down on uh, to the finish line and getting some wise words there from uh, the winner in the women's race, of course. And here comes our second place, the youngster, just 24 years of age from Norway. And as mentioned, look at her, she is happy and so she should be. And she also taped uh, to uh, the liquids there, energy booster. Uh, fantastic, amazing. That is really good. <laughs> She's wearing the pink bib, of course. She is uh, the leader for the youth section for the woman, but this result here will uh, put her up quite high as well on the woman's standing overall. Well, a tremendous result for her. Easily the best result of the year for her. She had a sixth place at the Jezerska Panasanska, fourth place Marcia Longa, third, well, sixth place, I should say, at uh, Konig, seventh place at Tartu. So to get a second place here certainly is a wonderful result. Just waiting now for our third place for the woman, of course. And in uh, Ildris, the last station there was Sierra Bonner at uh, third place. Five minutes, uh, 52. <laughs> there you see the couple. They have a small child together. He must be extremely proud there. Yeah. Wasn't quite his day, but uh, his partner certainly taking the limelight, I'm sure. There you have Serena Bona. Yes. And take a third place for her, her best result in just her second attempt at Anfasa Lopic, she was sixth last year. And it's a third consecutive third place for the Swiss skier. That was a little bit interesting about the uh, time there. It was uh, three hours, uh, four, four minutes, 10 seconds in uh, the last 10K for uh, between Skofterud and Kveli. And then it was uh, three minutes, six seconds. So she had taken uh, one minute, four seconds the last uh, the last 10 K or 9 K. That's an impressive run. So uh, it look on the technique and uh, look on the face on uh, Vibeke Skotter that she was really tired. Yeah. So the last girl for the podium, Serana Boner. The 29 year old from Switzerland crosses the line. Um, six minutes, three seconds behind our winner, but still on the podium. And she'll be happy with that because she had a few inj injuries earlier in the year. She had a problem with the back yeah. that kept her out of the opening ski classics. And then she had a, a problem with illness as well. So it's good to see her uh, slowly but surely getting to back to her best. So our three women. Born and raised in Switzerland. was uh, the champion last year, Ski Classics. She took out the overall competition for the woman. Of course, joining Team Experit this year, making them uh, uh, a powerhouse, really, Team Experit for the woman, but it hasn't quite been their day. They'll be disappointed, I think. Yep.
because uh, a lot of the talk for the woman was about Susan Nystrom, Jenny Hansen, of course, looking to defend her title. Start your here as a winner in Boston. Let's cross down now to the winner. Uh, what can I say? It's amazing. I I felt very strong from the beginning. Uh, after 20 kilometers, I lost my pole and I had to turn around and go back for pick it up again. And it was a little bit uh, dramatic, but uh, yeah, I stay cool and yeah, I I felt strong the whole way. Uh, we were surprised because you were ahead of uh, Jenny Hans and then uh, suddenly you were you were behind her. So it was the pull. you lost it the whole yeah. pull. It was uh, the time when I lost it and uh, I saw her double pulling very very well and I thought okay. Uh, now the train is leaving me and I just had to focus on myself but after 40-45 I, I catch her again and I, I just uh, move on and try to, to push hard and then she was gone. Uh, you, you were amazing, you won with uh, over four or five minutes uh, to the second one and a new record for Vasilope for women, 4.06, 4.07. <laughs> Uh, it's crazy. Uh, I haven't prepared so very, very well before this race, but uh, yeah, uh, I like to race uh, long, uh, long distance and uh, long training. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's fun. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. So winning words there from uh, the Norwegian who has taken top spot here in Avarsalop, smashing the record by nine minutes, four minutes from the second place getter and uh, may be able to get a few words from our second and third place getters as well. We'll just have to wait and see on that one. But of course, coming up very shortly, we'll have the prize ceremony. As we see uh, Jenny Hansen making her way to the finish line here in Amora, defending champion. She was on top of the podium 12 months ago. She'll have to settle for fourth place here in 2012. interview there with Vibeke Skofterud. We got the reason why she lost uh, the pack, uh, lost Jenny Hansson. So Jenny Hansson looks a little bit tired as well. But fourth place is still good. Oh, of course, you certainly cannot complain about that. But if you have been winning before, you may be not so satisfied. Of course, so 9 minutes 52 seconds. A minute and 51 seconds behind. Don't look too happy. <laughs> Unable to defend her title, but as you said, a fourth placing is still very impressive. And still remember, although she was nine minutes behind in fourth place, that would have pretty much equaled the record yep. that was set before this year, of course. So a presentation now for the men. Our top three skiers out there. Third place, Rajak holds on to top spot in Ski Classics. Next to him, second place, Daniel Tainel, three-time winner. That's to settle for the bronze medal, you could say, here today. And our champion, Jürgen Brink. True champion. Three straight years has been crowned victorious here in Vasilopet, Swedish 1-2, and the Czech star Stanislav Rajak in third place. Of course, as mentioned, some money up for grabs as well. 75,000 Swedish crowns for Brink, 50,000 for Tinel, and 30,000 for the third place getter Stanislav Rajak. And that's uh, around uh, 75,000 Swedish crown is around uh, 8,000 euro. Yeah, roughly. So our top three guys. But uh, it could have been anyone up there, really. Yeah. Uh, we had, what, about nine guys with about five kilometers to go. And these were the three that stood out. And uh, as Tonel said, he was a little bit blocked in, wasn't he, <laughs> at the finishing line, unfortunately. Daniel Rickardson, it was. Daniel Rickardson, fourth place, four tenths of a second behind the winning. A 
That's crazy. <laughs> That's so, crazy. So, so tight. <laughs> Yeah, he got the new car. New car, not bad. 16 uh, seconds, the new record. It'll beat the re new record with. Yep, the old record. Three hours, 38 minutes, 57 seconds by uh, Peter Joransson in 1998 has been smashed by 16 seconds here in uh, 2012. And a new car for Jürgen Brink. So just a few more words from our champion up there on the winner's stage. So this is our fourth place, uh, sixth place, I should say, a woman. This is uh, Sarah Svansson, Susan Nistrom crossing the line in uh, fifth place. Some 11 minutes, 23.7 seconds behind. And you just got to wonder if there's a little bit of an issue today for Susan Nistrom. Of course, she's been on fire lately, winning the last three ski classics. So down that final hill for a young lady from Team Extra Personnel. She'll be the second from her team over the line, of course, her, her younger teammate, Kvalia, taking second place today. Yeah, as, we, as we mentioned, uh, I don't think uh, Susan Nyström is satisfied with the day and uh, not uh, Jenny Hansen either. I think they will uh, count with better uh, places today. But it's not bad to be fourth and fifth place. Oh, definitely not, especially when uh, you see the times that uh, they've done. I mean, it's personal best times for pretty much each and every one of them. So. Yep. Of course, fantastic conditions today, though. We hear from others. Now we see from the, the Eversberg how it looks a little bit longer down. So and these people have done half pipe. And we will not be staying with this one to uh, commentate these ones home? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Of course, they have a shut-off time, don't they? Each and every station has a shut-off time. Yep. But good on them. Fantastic that they're giving it a go. Certainly not the, the fastest pace that we saw from the winners, of course, but still uh, people from all ages, from all around the world. As mentioned, 37 nations represented here today in Vassalopa 2012. Female competitors, of course, male competitors. As mentioned, various ages as well. It's a achievement to, to just reach the finish uh, if you are uh, far in the back. Uh, the goal can be just to, to end the finish. So it's fun to see here that uh, everyone can uh, to join the race. So even uh, when you are in Eversberg, when uh, the top athletes enter finish, you're still a okay skier. Oh, definitely. Then you see... Uh, some of the uh, stops along the way in Hock Bay. This is after 70.9 kilometers, as mentioned, some 92,220 liters of Ekberg Ekstroms, I should say, blueberry soup, sports drinks, coffee, etc., etc., consumed here in one day, the Vasalopet. Yeah. 
Stefan Strand. Vad är du då? Vad är du då? Ja men, par tusen åtta hundra fyra antal är i kopp. So just waiting now, of course, for the prize ceremony for the woman. Of course, just moments ago, we saw the prize ceremony for the men in a brand new car for Jürgen Brink. But it's no new car for the girls because the, they have their own race uh, uh, earlier this week. So, Shea, called Shea Vasa. So if they break the record there, they get a new car. Okay. Well, that's unfortunate for the Norwegian. Of course, she wasn't racing in the Shea Vasa. Uh, a race that was won by Susan Nistrom for the fifth time. Which is a tremendous result. Just couldn't quite back it up here today in the longer form. Susan Nistrom uh, won, uh, won the car a couple of years ago in the Shea Vasa. The girls race. Again, this is in the back of the field. As the crowd continues to stick around here at the finishing line in Mora. And uh, people will continue to cross the finishing line for the next, well, what a few hours into the early evening. And it's pretty cozy in the, in the end here, it's uh, uh, lighting up with uh, some uh, small, small fires on the finish straight and the, the last bit, so yeah, it's a good, good atmosphere. Yeah. And it turns into quite a festive environment here this evening. Of course, it's a huge achievement for a lot of these people. As we hear the speakers say, they expecting time around uh, eight, nine hours when they come here to Eversberg. And uh, they have, uh, have to end to finish uh, before nine o'clock, I think. So that's uh, 13 hours, so it's still more people to go to come there, up to Eversberg. Nine o'clock, so that's another eight and a half hours. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible. So a moment away now from uh, prize ceremony for the woman. And well, overall, what a great day, hasn't it been? It's uh, what a race. It has been lovely. And I was really excited in the last uh, 15k. I could see that. <laughs> definitely, definitely see that. It's been a, been a good race and uh, exciting. Uh, uh, the last bit there with Jürgen Auckland. Uh, uh, went away, got the gap, 18 seconds, was catching them, and then there uh, was a group of uh, nine, ten skiers, and the finish, what do you say? Ah, yeah, it's it's, it's, yeah, as you said, the top four to be separated by such a small margin, it was absolutely phenomenal, and over 90 kilometers to have that sort of finish is, is fantastic for 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 the locals who have turned up here, for the, the Swedes who have traveled from all around the country, from the overseas guests here as well, and of course for, for you at home who've watched it, it's been uh, absolutely entertaining. And of course there's still two more ski classics to go as we look at the uh, standings at the finish for the woman. Skofterud from Norway taking it out in a record time, 4 hours, 8 minutes, 24.7 seconds. And uh, it was a Norwegian one to Kvali crossing the line in second place, some three minutes and six seconds behind her fellow countrywoman, Serena Bona from Switzerland and Team Spirit rounding out the top three for the woman. And there is Serena Bona, third place getter. 29-year-old coming back from injury. It's been a bit of a difficult season for her. 
but she's uh, starting to get back to her best. And our second place get up. As mentioned, Norwegian 1 2, the 24 year old. And Leila Fale. Of course, with the pink bib leading the youth section for the woman. There goes our champion. What a big day for her. I think she's gonna be pretty happy this evening when she thinks back of the race. And as and she I, said in the interview, she hasn't really prepared too well, has she? No. And I know she's uh, gonna be a little bit of surprised how big Vasalop it is uh, when people talk to him and uh, talk to her and so on. The, uh, the men's race is, uh, is amazing how big it is. People always said uh, uh, when they talk about cross country skiing, they talk about Vasa Lopet. So you have to, I think you have to have a medal in the Olympics or World Championship uh, to compare a victory in Vasa Lopet. Well, that uh, uh, puts things into perspective there. Especially in Scandinavia. Uh, definitely. Overseas and so on, I, I can't answer. <laughs> Uh, just some of the highlights from the women's race. Our champion crossing the line with the Norwegian flag. Tremendous result for her, as mentioned, smashing the record by nine minutes. And as you mentioned, she'll reflect back later on and just realize how big this achievement was here at Vasalopet. So you might have to do a little bit of uh, translating here, mate. <laughs> she talked a little bit, and uh, he talked about uh, the pole and so on, and uh, Vibeke answered that. Uh, uh, Ali asked if she was stressed with the pole and so on. But, uh, <laughs> so didn't. here is our current standings for Vasalopet, or for Ski Classics, I should say, after Vasalopet, our fifth of seven races this year. Stanislav Rajak continues to hold on to the lead and has quite a comfortable margin back into second place, who is Jürgen Auckland in third place, Yimmy Jonsson from uh, Team Experience. Now the sprint standings, it's all about one man. It's the Czech master of the sprint, Stanislav Rajak. 150 points, almost 100 points from second place, Jerry Alin, who, of course, we had the pleasure of talking to and talking to him up here in the commentary box. And Well, it's time for us to say goodbye, of course. So we started 15,800 competitors in uh, this race. And, well, what a great day. What a great race. It's fantastic. Thank you very much, Martin. For Thank joining you, us today, it's been fantastic to have your expertise. Seven time competitor here in Barcelona, of course, second place in 2005, and of course, world champion bronze medalist. It's always great to have you here, and hopefully, you can join us again soon. Of course, Ski Classic, still two more races to go. We're off to Norway for our final two races, and we just see how it stands up for the team. So a lot more to play for. It's very tight across the board with regards to men's, women's, sprint and the team, of course. Well, I've been Mike Craig. I've been joined by Martin Larsen from us. We'd like to say thank you very much for joining us here in uh, the Vasalopet. We've come to you live from Mora. And we say on behalf of ourselves and the production team here, it's goodbye for now. Bye, bye.
efterlysning igen. Det är Ronny Wikman som är efterlängtad. Max Lindberg väntar vid ett stort.